Cause she doesn't think that girls can sing rock and roll Sing rock and roll songs But I don't think they got Bikini Kill Records in small town Wisconsin Record shops But that's where they need them now more than ever so if there's girls still growing up in this world to believe they can't sing rock and roll, I don't want to live in this world anymore. All right now. No, I don't want to live in this world anymore. Where I'll run away from every home I ever have So I'll build a new house in every town I pass And maybe then I won't always feel lost in craft When I was growing up, I was the smartest kid I knew Maybe that was just because I didn't know that many kids All I know is now I feel the opposite Like if you don't want to work Then that becomes your job There's a lot of overtime There's not many days off I hope you know It's hard to explain to people that I know or the kids who come to shows that I just don't want to talk about the office today. Day. 
I'm burying their arms for a vein or two that maybe they forgot. And the cops say it's a crime for people like me and those friends of mine to want to die. Like my neighbor in St. Pete, she's been on house arrest down here. If she tries to leave her yard, they'll lock her in a cage for years. Cause sometimes she wants to die. And she shoots dope when she thinks she could die. And the law, they caught her one too many times. Shooting dope when she fell like she could die. I'm, dude, I'm, I almost just did a, a, a fucking shirtless stream on accident. Um, fucking Jesus Christ. Uh, caboose. Uh, Karina's, Karina's gonna go, uh, have a little sexy time fun. That's, that's what that means. Uh, let me get everything situated here. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm running behind. Let's just put it that way. Oh. Oh, nope. I just turned that back on. Hey, Brooke. Oh, all right. Get the fucking heart rate monitor off. Oh, just 
bear with me. Like I said, I'm, I'm running behind. Fucking take some brace off here from fucking hopping around exercise stuff. My high knees and butt kicks and shit like that. I brace my ankles just so I don't old man myself. Uh, my neck's tight today too. Jesus Christ. Bear with me. Somehow, despite being horny, I still have moments of innocence. Oh, caboose. Oh, okay. I'm here. Um, was that fire? Oh. 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 Jesus. All right, I started. Um, I started building the gross old pedos master list. Um, but I had to get to like core workouts. Um, still, I still owe myself another one, uh, as I've started doubling up my workouts. Um, I've broken them apart. I'm no longer doing like whole body workouts. Um, I am doing like core, legs, weights, arms, that sort of stuff. Right. Um. But everything I was doing, I now have at least a minimum of a double on. Um, so, yeah. Like, I'm actually sore from yesterday. Um, like, yesterday's weights. And my fucking forearms. My forearms just don't want to cooperate. But I'm hoping giving him, like, two days of rest between periods. Right? Technically three-ish. Will, you know, help. Um... Dude, I started uh, started building out the Gross Old Pedos master list. I'm well into three digits um, of just Republicans. I had one Democrat that could have been on the list. One so far. Um, but the list is going to get long. Let's just put it that way. Um, I'm not even halfway. I'm not even halfway. Like it's dude. And they're just, it's just fucking ridiculous. Cause if you go to the gross old uh, gross old pedos section on shared content, um, you can find the master list thread just above what Caboose posted about the Idaho lawmaker. Uh, by the way, I'm only including pedos in the list. If I were to include rapists, 800, I'm not kidding you. 800. If I were, if I were going to include 800 uh if i were uh, oh no 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 you're fine caboose don't worry about it um if i were gonna include ra uh no, no no yeah no um if i were including rapists which we will in the the the, the gross old pedo section but the master list is just gonna be pedos um fucking yeah like if 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 i included the the, the rapists too the list would be over 800. Like, just Republicans. Like, politicians and, like, activists and, like, pastors and mayoral candidate, candidates and shit like that. Like, yeah. No, it's 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 well over 800 if I included rapists. It's gonna... It's still in triple digits with just pedophiles. Just pedophiles alone. It's, it's fucking well into the triple digits. Uh, and I'm not even... I'm not even close to halfway on the pedos. Like it's, it's, and I'm, I don't even know if somebody wants to count how many I've got so far, feel free to count them. I didn't start numbering them. Um, oh God punk. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I've got God punk. Trust me. If, if when I am done, if somebody wants to go through the list and they have some that aren't on the list, by all means, Adam, uh, we can add them then. But let me get the list finished because it is. Yeah, it's a big fucking list. It's a big fucking list. Uh, I know it's weird. Uh, more shocked by uh, how few Dems or rapist pedos and by how many Republicans are. I know, right? Just not their thing. Um, dude, it's it's absolutely in, insane. Like, it's insane. Like the, the list is just bizarre and where's the, um, hold on. Let me find this one. Um, full view. Um,
There he is. Where is it? Ah. Oh. Christian Television Network entertain uh, Christian Television Network entertainer Ronald William Brown convicted for child porn who quote this is a quote had gone into online chats where he had extremely graphic discussions regarding kidnapping, sexually abusing, murdering and the eating of children. He had two pictures on his computer of decapitated children that had been bound and cooked. Christian Television Network Entertainer. I, I think depictions, Caboose. I think depictions, but I'm not 100% sure. And the fact that I'm not sure is is even more disturbing. Like, it's... I'm not... I'm not... I'm not... I'm not... Apparently, according to, I, but he wasn't a real Christian. Um, yeah, like, dude, there's some fucked up shit in this list, like properly fucked up. Did you know, um, Ted Bundy and the, what, uh, the, was it RTK? fucking killer dude both of them were like republicans and not just like hey ugh, thanks thanks for the sub carpet <laughs> stop giving twitch money carpet hey there man um uh i hung out till the end of the uh, thomas midgley um video and then i had to d dump out and get some food done um yeah like there's there's two serial killers on this list too by the way like uh ted bundy apparently was a a, a, a gop a gop delegate like he was, he was a delegate. Um, yeah, there's two serial killers on the list even. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, thank God I can just sort of like, I have the, the, the compartmentalization capabilities already. Like this shit just flows off my, off my back. Like it's, it's just water too convicted. That's, that is true piece. That is true, true, too, too known and convicted. Good point. Good point. Um, this stuff just flows like water off a duck's back, luckily. Um, so building this list doesn't, like, affect me emotionally. Like, it's it, it literally is nothing off of me. Um, mommy taught me how to compartmentalize well. <laughs> it's, it's what growing up around nurses who run ERs and shit will do. It's fucking, you learn to compartmentalize shit. Um, but, I mean, it just... Here's, 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 let's get the white blood cells. Um, here's, here's an interesting one. I, I don't, I have fucking my favorite. It's not my, you know, but here's an interesting one that stood out. Republican campaign worker Mark Seidensticker was found guilty of offering alcohol and cigarettes to a 14 year old boy. Okay. Sketchy, but authorities accused him of having offered beer and cigarettes to a boy while driving a car with a trunk stocked with blankets, duct tape, rope, and sexual lubricant. He was a uh, New Hampshire Republican state executive counselor uh, for the Burton campaigns for more than a decade. Um, Burton, uh, New Hampshire Republican, knew he was convicted of assault when he hired him. Yeah, that's it's just one of the ones that stuck out to me. It was like, yeah, we didn't get him, but we got we got him just before. You you you, uh, e composer. It is on the Discord server. It's it's slowly being built. It t it takes me time to build these fucking lists. But yeah, it's on the Discord server. If you go to shared content, gross old pedo's channel, you can find the thread that is called Master List. And so far, we're somewhere in triple digits. I, I don't know. We're 130, maybe, um, documented cases of, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, from raping their eight-year-old daughters to fucking banging interns and pages from the, like, student program to fucking, you know, it's, it's, dude, it's, it's all of it. 
Uh, the GOP ad consultant, Carrie Lee Kramer, who created the anti-gore ad modeled on LBJ's Daisy ad, he was convicted of sexual assault of two eight-year-old girls, including his daughter who appeared in the ad. Uh, Republican judge Ronald C. Klein placed under house arrest for child molestation and possession of child pornography. Fucking, I mean, campaign manager for Republican candidate for Congress in Arizona, former Quakertown PA police officer and self-proclaimed reverend convicted of having sex with two underage girls. I mean, Republican president of the New York City Housing Development Corporation, Russell Harding, pleaded guilty to possessing child pornography. It's just, it's, it's, it's the... It's the the litany. It's just the full spectrum of like, holy shit, man. Daniel Dean Thompson founded a family values film company that removed all the bad parts from films to make them family friendly. There's a front for child pornography arrested after having sex with a 14 year old. Uh, Wharton professor, you know, of Donald Trump fame and conservative consultant on media's effects on children, Lawrence Scott Ward, had a video of himself having sex with children. He was a sex tourist. It's almost like they're projecting. I know, right? There it is. Uh, GOP campaign volunteer, national convention delegate, Ted Bundy, kidnapping, rape, murder. I've seen the movie edits, this car accident. I have not. It'd be cool to have a flowchart of who's dead, who's working, retired, fired. Dude, Wither, I'll make the list. Somebody else needs the fucking... If you want a flowchart, Wither, learn to make a flowchart. Because the list is enough work of of its own. Trust me. Like I said, if, if I included rape, over 800. Over 800 to do. Um, it, by just removing rape... And like general sexual harassment, just by restricting it to children only offenses, right? Children only will probably keep us in the like 200 to 300 range, maybe, of like known Republican pedophiles. I'm not, Carpe, I'm not making a timeline. Fucking somebody, Wither, Wither wanted a fucking something. I'm I look, I will assemble the list on the Discord server and I will make sure everybody has it as a talking point so you can fucking slam a fucking conservative if you if you need be, but beyond assembling the list, any further uh, data analysis or beautification of data, that's up to y'all. But the but the list will be on the server. And every story has like a link associated with it. Uh, Kentucky GOP state legislator Dan Johnson accused of sexual assault on a 17-year-old. Suicide. Don't worry about it. He's he's, he's, just fucking... Don't even have to worry about that one. Ohio State Representative Republican Wes Goodman fondling an underage boy. Uh, Idaho GOP State Representative Brandon Hickson child molestation. Again, don't worry about the punishment. Suicide. Oh, I don't know. Fucking... Yeah, I, 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 I will get the data to get Pastor Roy D. Bolden, Providence, Rhode Island, GOP chair, child molestation and sexual assault. Ron P. Uh, Bassar Jr. of Trump University. He was a staff and coordinator and motivational speaker for Trump University. He raped an eight year old. Yeah. Oh, Republican state Senate candidate Sherman Lee Kreiner molesting a six-year-old girl. Prosecutors used an unusual uh, standard of uh, enough evidence to convict rather than probable cause because he's a popular lawyer. Not clear, just just uh, not uh, just not indicted. Um, there was this movie I watched as a teenager, said Caboose, where the plot was one of the worst human rights violations in history is being orchestrated by an organization fighting against the human rights violations. And I remember thinking this was one of the weakest plots I ever heard because that's such a cartoonish premise that it only could happen in a shitty movie and then this shit starts happening. Isn't it weird when that happens in real life? Hey, Zippy. I don't want to, but it could be a decent project for developing some data analysis and visualization skills, said Jay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just... Um, unsuccessful Republican candidate William C. Mock child molestation. Ironically, he ran on a campaign to fight child molestation and was endorsed by related organizations. Um, yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, Republic. Here's one that'll get the, get the queers all riled up. Um, Republican campaign consultant and Baptist pastor Kenneth Adkins. He said the pulse victims got what they deserved. He likes to molest children. 
Um, yeah, it, it just it's just fucking one after another after another after another after another after another. Oh, I need to edit that one. Hold on. Um. So many child porns. Just so many child porns. So many child porns. So many child porns. Did uh, he get what he deserved? No, he didn't, unfortunately. Oh, a Baptist megachurch pastor, Matt Chandler, punished a woman for divorcing her pedophile husband. Did not punish the husband. Husband's diddling kids. She divorces the husband for diddling kids. The mega church punishes the woman who initiated the divorce, not the man who was fucking kids. Good old fashioned Christian family values. I mean, it just. So the theory, uh, so the theory I'm going with, uh, by is people who are rabid about family values and such expect the rest of the world to be as degenerate as they are. I think, yeah, goat. I think so. Like, I, I think that that's fundamentally where we are at this point. Um, you can just sort of make that assumption. Uh, far right religious leader, Mark Adderholt, sex with underage girls, sexual assault, church organization knew and ignored it. Former judge, Baptist leader, Republican Paul Pressler, sexual abuse, assault of underage men. Um, I, 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 I they, they literally word it that way because I'm pretty sure it's Texas underage men, by the way, is Texas wording. It's Texas legalese. It's not boys. It's not children. It's, it's the sexual assault of underage men, which Texas, do we need to have a talk? Um, GOP Commissioner Jack Gardner of Millersville, Millersville, Pennsylvania, convicted of molesting a 13-year-old girl, pled guilty. 30 years later, he's on the city uh, city commission. Uh, GOP Commissioner John Butler and his wife sexually abused their underage niece. He was pardoned by the governor. Texas has earned to talk. Oh... I, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just a fucking list and a list and a list. Richard Gardner, he's a Nevada state representative. He admitted to molesting his two daughters. 34% of the voters still voted for him. He admitted to molesting his two daughters. 34% 34% of the people still voted for him. 34% of the people still voted for him. He admitted to molesting his own two daughters. He admitted to molesting his own two daughters. 34% of the people still voted for him. How retarded do you have to be? It's like that dude who was here last night. Who's like, I'll vote Republican no matter what, right down the list. Really? That's what you get. That's what you get. You got you get dumb motherfuckers like that who are running around going, I'm voting Republican no matter what. Ro- really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Democrats are fucking like, you know. F- Dude, he admitted to molesting his own two daughters. And you're like, Republican. Fuck me, people are... Um, yep, yep, check off, it's a bingo card for Wither if you're playing. Oh, we had this dude in the Netherlands who in a late night talk show admitted to raping someone. The entire room laughed, public and guests alike, they're far right as well. Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, Marcus, you can choose to believe it, but you know it's not true. Because he's pro-life. I, I just, you know. Uh, Republican campaign official and former Romney staffer, Matthew Joseph Elliott, he was convicted of sexual exploitation of a child, got a sweetheart deal, but he ended up murdering a kid. 
Yeah. Um, Republican campaign official, former Romney staffer, Matthew Joseph Elliott. He was convicted of sexual exploitation of a child, but they basically gave him a slap on the wrist. This motherfucker uh, walks free for all intents and purposes. Ends up murdering a kid. Probably raped the kid. Easier to get away with the murder, then. <laughs> yeah, and half the Dutch internet is pissed off because the rapist has been, and I quote, multiple people. Canceled. Oh. Oh, 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 this is this is a good one. This is a good one. Republican preacher Hubert Lee Bennett uh, arrested for soliciting sex from multiple 16-year-old boys claimed he did so to gain their trust and teach them the love of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm pretty sure when uh, Jesus said, suffer you little children, that's not quite what he meant. So, you know, keep your fucking hands off. Um, I, and then we have... Um, We've got the kids, too. The kids of the psychopaths. Because they get in on it, too. Right? (sighs) Clifton Bennett, age 18. Son of Arizona Republican State Senator Ken Bennett. Pleaded guilty to assaulting three boys ages 11 to 15 with broomsticks up their rectal areas. They sodomized 18 boys in total. And we're not charged with sexual assault. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just... Oh, here's a fun one. The Washington Times HR director, Randall Cass- uh, Cassidy. He is, he is the HR director for, or at least he was, for the right-wing uh, Washington, Washington Times. Quote, the Washington Times is the only newspaper where the moral issues of family and faith are proudly reported on on the front page on a regular basis. The only newspaper where the moral issues of family and faith are proudly reported on the front page on a regular basis. He was caught in an underage sex sting. Oh no, crimson. Yeah, they don't. Dude, it's it's rectal tearing. It's a like, you know, it's intestinal tearing. It's the potential for like colostomy bag. It's yeah, it's it, it will fuck you up. Um Rubble, Republican director of the Young Republican Federation, Nicholas Elizondo, <coughs> got caught molesting his 6-year-old daughter. Pretty sure that's not what other people had in mind when they were talking about the Young Republican Federation, but you know. Um, Faith and Family Alliance director, Republican strategist, and lobbyist Robin Vanderwall was convicted of five counts of soliciting sex from boys and girls over the internet. Also, did some illegal lobbying. So much child porn. So much child porn. Jesus Christ. Republican City Councilman Fred C. Smelter Jr. pleaded no contest to raping a 15-year-old girl. He got six months. He raped a 15-year-old. Pled no, pleaded no contest. No lo contendere. Fucking no contest. Six months. For raping a 15-year-old girl. Oh, it is, like I said, it is, it is a hell of a list. It is a hell of a list. And like I said, I'm not even halfway through it. Not even halfway through it. It, It's just going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. And yeah, if I, if I start including rapists and the like general sexual assault and harassers and shit like that in the list, this would be a four digit list. (laughs) Oh, Jesus, Marcus. My neck is tight today. Dude, I need to get a massage. I hit up my guy. Who just 
child pornography, child pornography, child pornography. Oh, Neil Bush, the savings and loan grifter of the Bush family, sex tourism in Thailand and Hong Kong. Uh, oh, one of my favorites. This is one of my favorites. Ted Nugent, the Nuge. Oh, al- this is how it's put. Alleged musician and right-wing provocateur who joked about assassinating Obama, beloved friend of moralist Huckabee, sex with underage girls. Also wrote a song about it. Yeah. Also, did you know Cat Scratch Fever is a song about having sex with an under uh, with underage girls? Yeah. Wrote a song about it. Super famous. Got rich off of writing a song about banging underage girls. The Nuge. Pedo's Bizarre Adventures. Oh. Jesus fucking Christ. I'll I'll finish the list when I can. He brags about it in the Behind the Music episode. Of course he does. Of course he does. Of course he does. Oh, yeah, the Rev, there's a bunch of them. Ironically, the only song that was ever a hit for him. It is, isn't it? Despite I hate this planet. Uh, he also started to vag- vag- uh, vaginally rape Clinton with his firearm at one point. Oh, God. Yeah, it sounds about right for Nuge, though. It sounds about right for Nuge. Uh... Wait, what? Um, flag on play, flag on play. Shawnee City Council of Kansas. So Shawnee City in Kansas has voted unanimously to ban co-living arrangements. If one adult is unrelated to another adult, then the entire group will be classified as unrelated. And any group of co-living unrelated group is forbidden under the ordinance. That's that cupcake. That's that's the classification. If one adult is unrelated to another adult, then the any the entire group will be classified as unrelated. So if you've got like four people living together and two of them are not related to each other, then the entire group is classified as unrelated by this ordinance and they are forbidden from doing so. Roommates are illegal, Caboose. Yeah. Yeah. Shawnee City, Kansas. Roommates are illegal. Party of small government, right? Somebody said it, right? Somebody, uh, party of freedoms might went, uh, might went with. Uh, yeah, party of small government, everyone.
Roommates are illegal. They're making roommates illegal now. I... That kind of just put a pause in my entire game. Like, I, I don't... Okay. Sure. Sure, roommates are illegal now. I mean, you know, it's one place, but holy shit. And it's bum... It's podunk Kansas. I mean, no offense, but... Off get offended if you want. Kansas doesn't matter. It's a piece of shit. Um, it's a godforsaken state. But... Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> Tech support. Shawnee City in Kansas has made cohabitation illegal. Um... Purely for like real estate manipulation manipulation purposes, as near as we can tell. It was a city council vote, unanimous, 8-0. They banned co-living. Co-living is defined as any group of uh, any group of unrelated adults living together in a dwelling unit. The ordinance states that if one adult is unrelated to another, then the entire group will be classified as unrelated. They banned roommates. There you go. I mean... No. Give me a name. No. No, you can't, apparently. Under this ordinance, you could not do that. Adopted... Adoption is relation. Zippy. Adopt, uh, related people. Related. Come on, pay attention to the keyword here, related. If you're related, married, adopted, cousin, related. But if two people in that group are unrelated, then the entire group shall be deemed unrelated. Do they? I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't fucking know. You people are. I, I've got a. I've got a fucking article here. I've got a picture of a goddamn fucking uh, uh, of a screenshot of a of a newspaper. Shawnee unanimously passes ordinance banning co living. Like if anybody wants more fucking details, go start looking. Shawnee is spelled a S H A W N E E. I have no more information for you. If you start asking for legal distinctions, qualifications, classifications thereof, go find the fucking, uh, the ordinance yourselves and start, uh, and start informing the rest of us. That's all I have. So you can stop asking me questions about it because I ain't got shit. So Go do some work. <laughs> Spent my afternoon trying to build a fucking list of pedophiles. Um, oh, look, Deutsche Bank is getting raided over suspected money laundering again. Must be Tuesday. Uh, don't care, don't care. Oh yeah, Florida and Tennessee banned ranked choice voting, by the way, despite their citizens polling support for it. Um, Tennessee uh, wanted it. Voters uh, chose to keep uh, ranked choice by 62%. Um, they're fucking getting rid of it. Um, and then Florida signed uh, the, the election bill that you created the brown shirts for Florida. Um, that, that is a complete ban on the use of ranked choice voting anywhere in the state, despite what 77% um, favored ranked choice voting in the state. Um, Yeah. This is 
getting stupid. Where the hell is your father? I also have a clip. Um, I don't know if I can find it on the fly, though. Um, I have it. I don't know where it is. God damn it. I have this great clip of uh, fucking, I downloaded the, the video. Go, and Alexander wept where a billboard is to a grocery store. Hey, me so sad. We were there we go. Hang on. Sinful glut of bullshit Oreos. What the fuck? It just resets the... Everybody like, and now we get to go home. Can you in the world? Choke. You have a po you have a poison in your mind, and the fact that you can't see it makes me. You have a poison in your mind, and the fact that you can't see it makes me so sad. We work really hard. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that clip for something. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I, I desperately want to use that clip of Brennan. Fucking. <laughs> you have a poison in your mind, and it makes me so sad that you don't see it. We worked really hard. Don't. <laughs> it's so perfect for, for all of the like anti work stuff. Uh Fucking DeSantis has never made great choices, but he's uh, been making some exceptionally shitty ones lately. Uh, trim down to two seconds. Well, that's uh, oh, that's not even. Hold on, that's the wrong fucking window entirely. I got you know. Hang on. This is getting stupid. Yeah, that's. I mean. I don't know who Owen Jones is. All I know is fucking Brennan is. Yeah, Brennan's way more important than Owen Jones. <laughs> I don't give a shit about Owen Jones. Owen Jones can go fuck himself. I don't I don't give two shits about Owen Jones. Brennan Lee, though. Brennan is amazing. So. Um, oh, wrong one. Yeah, I looked him up. I still don't care about him. So, all right. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? Are you shitting me? Oh, for fuck's sake, just go to the Bloomberg article. Fucking nested fucking tweet, subtweet, Reddit, repost Reddit, fucking... Just go to the fucking article. Jesus Christ, everybody references the... Ugh, I hate fucking people who can't just strip a URL correctly. Um... Are you shitting me? So Texas, you know, the state that suffered a massive collapse of their uh, electrical grid in 2021 um, that killed 702 people, um, has decided to devote 25% of its peak energy load to crypto coin mining. Fuck that shit is a that state is a shithole. Fuck that state is a shithole. I know Bobby counseled me to like not criticize Texas as a whole, but I'm sorry. Texas is a goddamn shithole. 
Like, it, it just, you know, oh, some places are good. No, you know what? The whole place is fucking trash. And you know what? You're a garbage human being if you choose to live there. There, I fucking said it. Fucking, oh my god. A friend I used to respect moved there and then developed brain worms. Yeah, dude, it's something about Texas fucks people up. There it is again. Yeah, Disney, dude, did, Florida can't dissolve the Reedy Creek District without a billion dollar debt, bond debt being paid back. Disney's got Florida over their fucking knee. Argued socialism was what caused the power outages because, and I quote, the government pays the electric companies, that's socialism. Oh, for fuck's sake, your friend's retarded. Or your former friend is retarded public. Holy shit, man. <laughs> the fucking harbor incident. The Galveston uh, explosion, shall we say. The the Galveston oopsie-daisy. Shall we go with Crimson? Um, fucking. Uh, it's the Galveston oopsie-daisy. Just a small little oopsie daisy. Um, do we have? Yeah, I don't give a shit about any of that. Oh, there's such. I mean, there's after footage and shit like that. I'm not gonna sort through it. So we don't talk anymore and I don't give a fuck. Yeah, he was upset with me for not agreeing with him because he had pipes burst in his roof and I'm just not, I'm just uh, trying to be right. Uh, so we don't talk anymore and I don't give a fuck. Yeah, that sounds about right, man. That sounds about right. Like, you, you, gotta, you gotta cut some of these motherfuckers loose. Um, Florida, again, Florida, again, Florida, Jesus Christ. Oh my god, what'd you get to do now? They cops shot a kid over a fucking stolen pizza and a fucking and Pokemon cards. Dude, they're not releasing further details, but apparently a stolen pizza and Pokemon cards led to the cops shooting a dude dead. They shot three of them. They killed one of them. Over a stolen pizza and Pokemon cards. Were they shinies? I, I don't, you know. Marx was a centralizing authoritarian communist and communism in most of its iterations is the wrong way to go about achieving communism. If you want to achieve communism, you should be an anarchist. Um, if you want to eliminate the coercive hierarchical nature of the state, then you need to eliminate the coercive hierarchical nature of the state, not reinforce it with a vanguardistic methodology. So there you go. There's my opinion on Marx and communism. Mint condition, this shit matters. Well, I mean, they would have been, I mean, I, public. They're probably not mint anymore, seeing as they probably got some blood on them and or a bullet hole in them. Um, but, you know, the mint condition, if they're still in the pack, if they didn't immediately rip open the pack, right, and they didn't you, like uh, just immediately go after it, then potentially um, they could be mint. But they'd be in pack and it'd be a gamble for you. So we don't know. But we do know the pizza.
is Disney has the power now. Florida is Disney's a state, not USA. I mean, Disney is Disney's probably more of a state than fucking Florida. It's arguable, at least, that Disney is more of a state. They get way more protections. Jesus Christ, their manipulation of our intellectual property uh, system alone is the stuff of legend at this point. Nah, a cop definitely seized his as evidence and gave it to their snot-nosed kid. <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. But according to a random tweet, man, I guess uh, whatever. Um, once upon a time, that may have been true. Once upon that time, Che, that may have been true. There's an argument to be made there. The the but that shit did not on my watch. Not on my watch. We don't we don't cooperate with the fucking the commies. Look, if they have a local communal project that, that they want to work on, like if there's, you know, feeding the homeless, let us run it. Let the anarchists run it. I will happily let them participate in an anarchistic fashion. But I would never let the, the communists, the Maoists, the, the Leninists, the, the MLMs, I would never let them run anything. They do. They, they immediately seize power. They set up a fucking rigid hierarchy. They use substitutionalism and professionalism to enshrine people into vanguardistic positions. They fucking, yeah, no, I don't trust any of those motherfuckers. Fucking left unity's a meme at this point. Fuck them. So, they can, they can suck a dick. Um, yeah, you need to keep them in check. Like, that's... Dude, they will put a bullet in the back of your fucking head when you're not looking. That, that shit, it's not hyperbole, by the way. That's not hyperbole. The communists have more anarchist blood on their hands than the, the capitalists do. I'm not kidding you. Communists have killed more, more of us than the, the capitalists have. Capitalists have probably caused more suffering by and part. But as far as, like, body counts go, yeah, the communists have killed more of us than the capitalists. So don't forget that shit. Don't think that's an excuse to like the capitalist either. Fuck the capitalist too. It's just know your enemy. Yeah, stay where I can fucking see you. Exactly, Zippy. So is capitalism. Male rights. No. The best argument that you could be make you could make is that capitalism is in the sort of like late stages of feudalistic uh, development. And that, like, yeah, feudalism lifted a whole bunch of people out of poverty as well. Um, so did constitutional monarchism. But every system has its heyday. Every system has its uh, prime, and then it has a point where there's uh, diminishing returns. We're in the diminishing returns of capitalism. You could argue that it did some, uh, it did some progress and that it, it created and built some stuff. But it did it at the expense of the developing world. It did, uh, it did it for a portion of the world at the expense of another portion of the world. And if you deny that, then you're just coping. Um, and it did it at a, um, it did it in a coercive and, uh, authoritarian manner. Um, cap, as far as capitalism is concerned, if you can't pay to participate, you can fucking die, uh, die of a preventable in, uh, infection under the, uh, under the bridge, starving to death as far as we're concerned. Go fuck yourselves. Capitalism is ruthless. It's coercive by its very nature. Um, it is inherently authoritarian. It's inherently hierarchical, which makes it inherently authoritarian. So... It's, you know, you, you could make the argument that in a similar fashion that very much like feudalistic uh, uh, economic systems or political systems or social systems or constitutional monarchism or mercantilism or, you know, industrialism that like these things had a period of benefit that, you know, benefited a few um, and then, you know, mildly impacted the rest of society. You made big arguments, though, uh, counter to it as to the potential net benefits to society. Um, you're going to have to look at disease rates, heart attack rates, cancer rates, pollutant rates, developing world 
effects as well. Um, there's a whole host of nuances you're going to have to balance if you're going to attempt to make that argument. But um, at the end of the day, I would start with the position that even if capitalism is a uh, was a, 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 a net benefit to society, which I'm not entirely sold on, but even if it was a net benefit to society that we have reached a position in capitalist development where it is a net negative uh, for society now, especially on a global scale. Um, and so it's time has come very much like feudalism gave way to constitutional monarchism. Um, capitalism's time is coming. Um, it's time for a new ism. What that ism is, it's probably already out there in the wild somewhere. It's probably already operating somewhere in the wild, um, as to what it will be, what form it will take, whether it's some form of like neutered strapped to the floor, put into a fucking gimp mask version of capitalism. That is sort of like a next evolutionary step of Nordic models or whether it's something else entirely. I don't know. I'm not fucking Nostradamus up in this bitch, but given the uh, capitalist modality and how it is uh, impacting the every person, like, you know, on a di what used to be shipped over uh, overseas for developing nations, the, the, the negative effects or the costs of capitalism is now coming home to roost. And there's no denying those effects as it turns inwardly, which, again, is a Marxian critique. I will never take away Marx's critiques of capitalism. His critiques of capitalism are salient. They're prescient. Um, they're they're accurate. Um, his solutions are dog shit. His solutions are absolute garbage. Um, so that is what it is. Um, but yes. <laughs> Chism schism. Oh, non nonsense. So much for uh, so much for America leading the way, male rights. So much for America being the cutting edge of development. We're just a we're just Apple. We're just Apple. We'll just let let somebody else develop something, and then we'll you know take credit for it, right? We're we're the we're the Apple techno we're the Apple Incorporated of countries. Just a shitty knockoff version that claims first. Cool. Are you fucking retarded, male rights? We, that's exactly what we do. That's exactly what we do. We throw shit against the wall and hope it sticks. That's that's our entire political system in a in a fucking sentence. That's that's our entire fucking country in a sentence. Just throwing shit at the wall and hoping it sticks, dude. That's lobbying. That's politics. That's our fucking economic system. Holy shit, man. That's literally this country in a nut. You summed up America in a line and then basically was like, but that's not us. That is 100% us. Wow. Capitalism is inherently authoritarian and coercive. Leak. It's inherently coercive. By its fundamental nature, it's coercive. Oh, also it's statist. It requires a statist structure. It requires a monopolization of force by the state to, enfor uh, to enforce and back up capitalism. And if you study the, tran uh, the transfer from mercantilism into capitalism, especially in the new world, you understand that inherently. You get that at a base level. Once you study the the transfer uh, the transference from mercantilism to uh, capitalism, without this uh, without the statist mon monopolization on force, capitalism can't exist. It is it is fundamentally coercive, and it always has been. It's there's never been a moment in its history where it wasn't that.
land development price manipulations, protective tariffs, major subsidies, joint ventures with active government participation, direct government production, state-supported railway development using near-slave labor in many cases, which then bootstrapped into expansionist policies that further allowed for greater resource exploitation at a corporate level, creating railway tycoon steel magnets and the like. Combine all this with the statist and corporatist repression of the labor movements all along from Blair Mountain to the Pinkertons, and you begin to see the bigger picture. The fact is that the capitalism in any of its forms is not only wholly reliant upon the initiation of force by the state, but could not ever have been created without it. The capitalist needs a status structure to exist, and in the absence or removal thereof, it will quickly create an ersatz replacement. It just is. Capitalism requires the violence of the state to exist. It is a fundamentally coercive system that always has been. Also, I bet Leak likes their. I like. I bet Leak likes all of the benefits of the labor movement, and uh, and but without understanding any of the benefits of the labor movement. I guarantee you, Leak Leak enjoys the 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 products of the 1880s to 1935 labor movement. Has no idea what those products are. Has no idea that uh, that is the benef- direct beneficiary of anarchist, socialists, and communists, and the labor movement in general. And um, would uh, would fight you tooth and nail if you tried to take those benefits away. This is just this is just hey, what's up, oh, Winnie Momo? Um, this is just somebody who smacks if they don't have a history lesson in them. So, good luck with that. Uh, nonsense. We already covered it. The Shawnee, uh, Shawnee city. Yeah, we already, we already covered it. Um, yeah. Um, non, uh, uh, non-related roommates. Yeah. What are they calling it? Yeah, co- banning co-living. Banning co-living. So, there you go. I remember when my evidence professor telling us that when a Pinkerton agent testifies, the overturn rate is suspiciously higher than normal. Yeah, it's amazing how that works, Marcus. It's almost like Pinkertons are a bunch of fucking liars. You know that's illegal. Like, leak. Hey, leak, what state do you live in? So I can go ahead and try and get ahead of that and report to the Department of Labor that you're going to actively attempt to undermine unionization attempts. Highly illegal, what you just said. Yeah. But I'm sure you're a law and order type guy, aren't you? You're a fucking hypocrite, and we all know it. But you're a capitalist. Most of them are. Anyway. Yeah, and just some mild, mild racism with the bagel comment. I caught that as well. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Leak, I'm going to have to ask you to come on air and cite your sources because I have an entire section on our Discord server uh, full of studies about cooperatives and uh, hierarchical versus hierarchical company organizational modalities and efficiency, customer satisfaction, and internal satisfaction and happiness and production rates. And all of them run contrary to what you have just stated. So I'm going to need you to cite your sources or shut the fuck up and get out because we don't allow people to talk shit. So cite your sources or bye-bye. I have an entire section dedicated to that. 
We, we have what we call the info store, which is dedicated to dealing with people like you who like to like, you know, blow smoke out their ass and never actually put up any content worthwhile. They just make declarative statements like it's a fact and then just move on while you pivot uh, and by the way, we do have free um, KT tape and uh, on uh, on uh, for uh, for pickup and the server in case you want to you know tape that ankle before you blow it out pivoting hard, which you're probably about to do. So go ahead and cite your sources on that. Uh, the invitation link is not valid anymore. Um, let me uh, let me set up a new one. We we burned the old invitation link for reasons. Oh, Discord, there we go. New Discord link is up. There we go. Anyway, all right, let me pop you down, pop you down. God, finishing that pedophile list is just going to be. Uh, by the way, you're not going to be get, uh, on the air unless you have sources to cite, just so, so you know ahead of time. Um, my power company is technically a co-op. It's news when there's a hundred out, a hundred house, three hour blackout. Meanwhile, the big capitalist company da going down for four days in the entirety of the mountain region. Meh. Oh, good. He's a Brit bonger. I have studies specifically to Britain then, um, for, um, for the co-op stuff. Let's see. Yes. Uh, well, uh, not. Uh, do I have Britain? I have. I have like fucking Eurostan shit. Let's see. Let's see. I have two decades of international data, some of which includes Britain. Uh, I have U.S. data as well. I have Quebec. I have France. I have psychological studies. Um, let's see. I have Brazil, India. Mm, let's see. Again, another meta an analysis. Uh, nope, that's British Columbia. Um, let's see. That's US as well. Oh. Texas, Colorado, Canada, Japan, California, New York, Massachusetts, Wisconsin. Doesn't look like I have uh, any. Well, let's just keep going here. I've got a bunch. You're literally making an argument for slavery. You're literally making an argument for slavery at that point. Congratulations. He's literally making an argument for slavery. This is this is the capitalist brain. This is the capitalist brain. He's, he's literally a feudalist. No, you are. You're literally making an argument for slavery. If all you're about is economic uh, performance, then why don't you just enslave them? It's the most efficient manner, uh, manner of controlling your workforce at the same time as in, uh, ensuring end results. You can just buy the people. Or you can just do indentured servitude. I mean, that's what Nestle does. Yeah. You, just, you need an authoritarian in charge of them. Like that's it's just just you you need an authoritarian in charge of them to get the best out of out of them because you don't know how to motivate your workforce otherwise. The fact of the matter is is you're just showing how poor of a manager you are. 
You're just a shit boss, man. You're like, if I don't fucking crack this whip, they can't, they won't get anything done. Then you don't understand how to motivate your people. You're just a shit boss, which I mean, we could already tell by based on your rhetoric in in, uh, in chat. You're, you're probably horrible to work for. Um, you probably think you're a great boss though, functionally. You're like, oh, all my employees love me. No, they don't. They don't love you, homie. They tolerate you. That's it. What few employees you have, because you've probably never, never managed more than like five people, 15 on the outside. But, you know, hey. Um, excuse me, sir, please drop the slander. We at Nestle use a variety of freedom deficient workers. <laughs> uh, barely tolerate you. I don't understand how people need a daddy like Luke. Uh, I most quit to wonder why. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, homie, the science doesn't back you up on it. The studies don't back you up on it. And you've yet to put a source for anything. You've yet to anything, anything. So anyway, uh, oh wait, the account was made an hour ago. I'll go fuck yourself. He's a troll. He's a troll. He won't get on air. He won't cite sources. He's just here to argue. And the account was made an hour ago. Peace. Good luck to you. Hope you don't accidentally blow up your small business because you refuse to acknowledge, like, you know, workplace safety standards. Because that happens. I was just watching... Um, um, fucking a, uh, a, a video, um, the United States, um, chemical safety board and investigation is safety, is safety and investigation board, uh, USCB, I think, um, about a s small, a silicon, uh, a silicone manufacturing processing and manufacturing facility in mid country. And they sm small business, but they were, they were supplying a good portion. They blew their facility up. They blew their facility up because they didn't have proper standards in place. They didn't have proper ticketing in place. They didn't have proper um, gas monitoring alarms in place. They didn't have proper anything at PPE in place. So um, somebody stacked barrels next to other barrels that shouldn't have been stacked there. And they processed them in the second batch and boom, just boom. Like it produced hydrogen gas and mass, the circulation system, which was an improper ventilation circulation system for the building, circulated it to the point of st uh, stoichiometric, uh, uh, um, like the stoichiometric sweet spot. Uh, stoichiometric uh, metrics are the uh, me methodology of measuring how gases become explosive, right? The, the ratio of oxygen to gas, that sort of thing. Um, their ventilation system mixed it perfectly and boom, the building goes up. I mean, fucking boom, like blew the fucking building up, killed the employees, that sort of thing. Um, and so like, yeah, like that's small business owners are some of the worst perpetrators of uh, workplace safety violations in this country. Um, So, yeah. Yeah, if if, if, uh, if nobody's ever gone to, like, the USCB fucking YouTube, uh, YouTube page, um, I, 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 I'm, like, subscribed to these guys. Um, USCSB, I think. US, USCSB. Uh, U.S. Chemical Safety Hazard Investigation Board. And they do, like, reconstructions and shit. Here's the AB specialty. There you go. This is their building. This is a small business. This is a small business. This is a small locally run business. And this is what happens when small business owners are allowed to like run roughshod the way they, they, they like to. This is, this is, this is, this is leaks future as a business owner. Basically is nobody should be able to tell me how to run my business. Yeah. Well, somebody needs to tell you how to run your business because, oh yes, zippy people died. Yes. People, people instantly died. Yes. This is a, this is a fatal accident. Yeah. 
Um, small business is often a misnomer. I know public, like anything under 50 employees is a small business. Um, yeah, this, this, this is, this is what happens when people like that are allowed to run businesses. People die. There you go. Here's another angle. That's that was a simple mixing error because they didn't have a workplace ticketing system in place and because they didn't have proper um, gas regulators in place. It's that simple. They cheaped out on them. They cheaped out on them. They didn't think they needed them because fucking who, who gives a shit about best practices that causes extra steps, it causes extra paperwork and it causes extra like cost because it would have required a, it would required a safety inspector. It would have required extra documentation and processing. It would have required extra equipment. All of this is extra cost to the small business owner who doesn't want to have to pay for it. That's what happens when you put people like that leak guy in charge of businesses. Buildings get leveled. People die. You cannot trust that shit. Because following safety rules is a hallmark of a lazy pussy. Yep, those those safety regulations are written in blood. Those every single one of those safety regulations is written in blood. Because we don't write those regulations without fucking putting them down first. Like that, it, it, we don't put the, the the like we're not like oh and what if and what if no it's it's twelve motherfuckers died oh shit yeah put that in there too you should probably do this. Um, I, they didn't have to pay for those caskets either. I'm betting. No. No. Um, Marcus, I've always been taught 50. I've always been taught 50, but, um, apparently it is. Oh, the government, the government, um, there's two ways to measure a small business by employment or by revenue. There we go. Um, There's a calculation. There's a calculation. Um, annual receipts is the total income or gross income plus the cost of goods sold. Um, I'm Jesus. I'm so deep in fucking SBA like regulations at this point. It may go up as high as 40 million. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, oh, it depends on the field as well. Okay, so small business depends on the field as well. So if we're talking manufacturing, a maximum number of employees can go up as high as 1,500. Wholesaling, it can go as high as 500. Uh, services, annual receipts, not to exceed 21.5. Retail, not to exceed 21 million. General and heavy construction, annual receipts, not to exceed 17 million. Special trade construction, receipts, not to re exceed 7 million. Agriculture, not to exceed 9 million. It depends on, it depends on field. It uh, depends on a whole bunch of shit.
Yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of qualifications. You actually need a person to like do a proper review of your business to know whether you're a small business or not. <clears throat> this is holy fuck. See, this is why when my employment lawyer friend talks, I zone out and think about Star Wars or something. Yeah, it's 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 dependent on a whole bunch of calculations as to whether you qualify as small business or not. Um I actually think wholesaling, I yeah, I think the company that I used to do work for here in the Valley that did $25 million in sales of flowers a year, wholesale, was a small business because the wholesalers are based off of their um, employee count and he was well under the 100 to 500 employee count range for small business. He was well under that. So... Yeah. Yeah, 25 million a year, small business. I it's always weird and it is creepy when they get into your DMs like that. Like that that's the weirdest shit, the the stalker tendencies. Um, yeah, it, it, it shows a, a lack of understanding of consent usually on their part, which makes sense usually. Oh yeah, we just meant to do this. Never mind. I meant to click the other button. Yeah, I meant to click the other button. I don't allow bad actors in. I don't allow people who argue in bad faith. He's already proven that he's he's poten he's not potential. He's he's purposely arguing in bad faith off of a, a t fucking two hour old account. He can fuck himself. If he's got any evidence to support his claims whatsoever, he's clearly DMing. Well, he was DMing people. I beast blocked him already because he's creepy and stalkerish and doesn't know how to say uh, uh, doesn't know how to take a no, which is. You know, I mean, it's got nice guy vibes. Ugh. Philly sheriff's officers and police raid a home looking for a dead man. That sounds about right. A dozen, more than a dozen officers pushed their way inside, guns in hand, looking for her son. Because he had a bench warrant for his arrest for failing to appear in court. He'd been dead for m five months at that point. Is the dead man still at large? He was shot and killed by a masked gunman in October when he left a, t a, a takeout restaurant. The police, of course, have made no arrests and given no motive for that crime, but they came looking for him because he had a fucking, like, a weed charge on him. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it, it literally says it traumatized her. Like the article it says itself fucking says like Marcus it traumatized the shit out of the mom. Yeah, I saw that Yogi. I think I saw that, right? Yeah, yeah, you're you're polling uh, voting information on how the fake of the I thought you and Chad may be interested what they do there. They were just making sure. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Yogi, if you're interested, it's in politics. Uh, the Australian government sent a mailer out to every household in Australia. Um, and like, this is, this is just like how to vote and shit like that. Your official election guide message from the election commissioner, polling places, how to make your vote count, what you can do, how to plan, what happens at the polling place. It's actually far more comprehensive than any of ours. Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah.
Oh, I mean, Philly is Philly is Philly. Oh, and Femboys, ooh, ooh, thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, so I mean, Philly's always been a fucking rough ass place. Uh, oh, um, this is great. This is great. Hang on, let me show you this video. You'll love this. Speaking of idiot, useless cops. All right. So this fucking obnoxious old cunt, white cunt, calls this kid a fucking N-word at the Little Caesars drive through She leans in and says, did that hurt you when she called him an N-word? And he says, no. So she smacks the shit out of him. Or attempts to, at least. Right? Video of the, you know, incident possessed by all. When Little Caesar's manager calls the cops and tells the cops that like one of their um, one of their employees has been battered by a, a customer, the cops respond by saying they couldn't arrest her because the incident wasn't seen by police. Not kidding you. That that the police said we can't arrest her because the incident wasn't seen by police. So just FYI, apparently, um. Apparently, cops can't arrest you for things they didn't see you do now. Or maybe cops are lazy, racist pieces of shit. I, I don't know. All I know is they didn't seem to give a shit about the, the black kid getting smacked by the old white woman and getting called uh, getting called an N-word. But yeah, that was um, that was the police's excuse. They literally said they couldn't arrest her because the incident wasn't seen by them. Do you not know what crazy bread is, Marcus? How the fuck don't you know what crazy bread is? There. Uh, I think that the pro uh, problem is the cops literally can't see white crime. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I'm sorry. I'm just, I don't see anything. It's like some John Cena joke shit. Um, you should, uh, you should move to Vegas, Marcus. Here, I have a, I was browsing the uh, Vegas local subreddit yesterday, last night. Um, and we keep we keep good track of um, uh, of like our spots. This is gas station menudo. I'm not kidding you. This is this is this is like sort of like this is our base quality Mexican food in this city. This is just this is a shit you can pick up at a gas station, straight up. Yeah, like. I, it's, uh, yeah, the boy band. Um, get some Ricky Martin up in this bitch. Yeah, we, I, I, you know, yeah, Vegas does food. We got food. Yeah, that's, that's, that's just gas station, Menudo. Um, I, we, this, this city does, does some, some stuff pretty baller. Ooh, super sibilant S on that one. Um, now I don't know, is, is he still molding? Is he watching? No, he left. Okay. And Rainbow's now too, sponsored by Florida and the like. Yeah, dude, we're, we're going to fucking move on it. Okay, we're going to do some Trump shit. We're going to move on her like a bitch, right? Like we're going to move on Florida. We already are. I'm going to drive fast and then breakfast <laughs> and breakfast in, in Vegas. Um, yeah. Um, fucking Vegas tourism, uh, board has already announced like we're, we're, we're moving. We're moving on that shit. Like Florida wants to piss off all the gay people. Fine. Come to Vegas, baby. We, we love you here. Your money is more than welcome in Vegas. We don't give a shit. We don't give a shit. No give a shit. If it weren't, dude, if it if it weren't for fucking federal statutes and shit, we'd let you get away with a lot more stuff here. Yeah, there's that's, that's there's like federal laws holding us back in this in this fucking place. There's there's shit we'd let you do. 
I saw it just the other day. Um, 50 caliber rifles, $29 to, to shoot them at the range here. You have to pay for ammo. But twenty nine dollars to rent a uh, rent a, a fifty cal a Barrett fifty cal for like an hour, um, and then you pay for the rounds. I don't give a shit. You want fucking you want to shoot machine guns? You want to fucking bang sex workers? You want to do dude? You want to do a line of coke off a of fucking stripper's tits? Vegas doesn't care. We don't care. Some of it's illegal. We don't give a shit. It's dude. This is. City just doesn't care. Like, whatever. You got money? Cool. Yeah. You'd be fine as long as you shoot it properly. I mean, you know, you wouldn't be an idiot. Yeah, you end up with shoulder surgery, but you'd be bipod mounted on the ground, prone position. If you're shooting it any other way, then you're a fucking moron and you deserve your shoulder surgery. And by the way, $300 for shoulder surgery? What fucking country are you from? That's definitely not a, an, an American price. Uh, oh. Let's see. Any other fun ones? Judge upholds Ghislaine Maxwell's um, sex trafficking condition. I didn't even know they were con conviction. I didn't even know they were fucking. That appeal went through fast. Jesus. Of course, none of the clients have been arrested. <clears throat> you notice none of the Epstein clients have been rounded up. Apparently, he and Maxwell ran this expansive network of child trafficking, but not and documented the whole thing. But yet, not a single client has been rounded up and convicted on the and charged even. Hmm. Fascinating. Yeah, we have the list, but not even an investigation. Oh, I've seen that one before. I think I, you may have actually posted. You may have put, sent this already. Wait, wait, wait. You have to pay to visit the doctor? Yeah, but not a lot, okay? Only about six, 160 uh, Norwegian kroner. But you still have to pay. That's crazy. Honestly, I think like 160 Norwegian kroner is a lot for... Shut up, 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 shut up. <sighs> yeah, Americans have an entirely different, you know. Uh, about 18 bucks, about 18 bucks. Oh, look, everybody. Hold on. Is everybody, every, everybody ready to be completely shocked and amazed? Completely shocked and amazed. You're going to be completely shocked and amazed. All right. New study released shows that fewer people die from COVID-19 in better vaccinated communities. I know, right? But the findings are based on data from 2,558 counties in 48 U.S. states. 80% reduction in death rate um, with high vaccine coverage as opposed to largely unvaccinated counties. So the reason it's important as a study is merely because um, the, the expansive nature of the study. It's very inclusive. It is, you know, it is a large N. Um, but who would have fucking guessed? Shock, I know. Oh. Oh, no, we're not. I mean, oh, dude, I'm... <sighs> I mean, yes, high end. I believe I said very high end. Um, oh, let's see. Oh, look, another mass a mass grave containing 900 bodies discovered in an area near Kiev. Um, Yeah.
There's your DOI, Swede. Um, and here's another DOI. The uh, benefits of large-scale COVID vaccination, COVID-19 vaccination, is the second, is the uh, 0867. So those are two DOIs relevant to. But the the large N study would be the second DOI. So we'd, um, I don't know, Yogi. I don't know how many so far. I I haven't been keeping track. I haven't been uh, I haven't been tracking that. Um, my state is one of the highest vaccination rates in the world and one of the lowest per capita death rates from COVID in the world. Pro probably just a coincidence, though. Um, so. There we go. <laughs> Putin and Zelensky both are going to be at the G20. Hmm, interesting. Oh, lovely. Republicans are hell-bent on kicking Madison Cawthorn out for good. You know, he's a horrible, horrible human being, but he amuses me, at least. Um, he's, dude, fucking, he's apparently okay with his junk being touched by dudes. He's okay with dressing up in some lingerie. He's okay with, like, doing some, like, you know, like, hanging out with sex workers. He's okay with partying with, like, some cocaine and some booze. Like, he seems like an interesting dude to be around. He's just got all twisted up inside of his fucking head because he's a politician. Um, yeah, no, Marcus, I'll see you in v VC. Hop, hop over in VC, Marcus, and I'll make it happen. No big deal. Yeah, those pictures of fucking uh, Cawthorn with a fucking dude groping him. Looking. Oh, Zippy. I mean, I. it was all over the fucking, like, media cycle. Yeah. Like, dude, he looked perfectly happy to have that dude's hand on his fucking junk. That wasn't a, oh, shit moment. It was a, oh, shit moment. <laughs> so, just saying. Fucking, he seems down to party. All right, like maybe we can get Hunter Hunter Biden and Madison Cawthorn together and, you know, fucking see what we can get. That would be dangerous. See what we can get going. Might um, oh. might be an interesting time, you know. Cawthorn, Biden, uh, Hunter can bring the crack because clearly uh, Cawthorn's down for some coke, right? He's he's down for the stimulants. And fucking, who knows when he sees that fucking wood that 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 thing that fucking Hunter's working with, may he be he'll be interested, because Hunter's fucking swinging some, uh, you know, heavy meat. So Man, to avoid seeing his penis thus far. Oh, it's 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 worth seeing. It's worth seeing. It's it's you know it's like all right that's all. The Eiffel Tower. It's it's larger than average, shall we say? He's he's definitely beating the uh, a few nation national averages, um. So, yeah, it's it's meaty, says Beast. Yeah, uh, country's gonna need more coke. Um, fucking uh, hey, uh, hey, impossible. Eh, you know, we just had to uh, we had to get rid of one idiot. Um, but that is what it is. Um. Only one so far, which is good. I don't I don't even know what this moron is. Either way, I'm just gonna ignore the stupidity for a second. What's on your mind? What's on your mind, resident attorney? So uh, the Supreme Court recently heard a challenge from a Puerto Rican man 
Um, in real brief, the guy was uh, living in the U.S. He was receiving Social Security. He moved to Puerto Rico. And apparently, if you live in Puerto Rico, you're only supposed to receive part Social Security. Um, he kept receiving whole. So eventually, the government came knocking on his door asking for like 15K or something obscene. Oh, this is the is this the case where um, Puerto, uh, Commonwealth citizens can be denied federal benefits? Yes. Okay. And the reason why I think it was interesting is because there was an eight to one majority that basically said, yeah, the con Congress gets to do this if they want. Um, the one dissent was Sonia Sotomayor. She's the most liberal member of the court, so yeah, of course. makes sense. Um, but there's actually an interesting thing going on with Gorsuch, I think, here, because he, he wrote a concurring opinion, and it really echoes some of the stuff he said before, right? So um, – he he described like the insular cases, the idea that the federal government could basically do whatever it wants to the colonies. Um, he basically said the only reason we haven't thrown this out is because no one has asked us to. <laughs> so he described them as no having no foundation in the Constitution, resting on racial stereotypes as full of poison and a disservice to our fellow Americans in Puerto Rico. Um. And the reason why I think this was interesting, because earlier on, I'm not sure if you saw, there was um, a big case uh, that basically said about half, 19 million acres in Oklahoma is actually Creek land. Um, and he wrote the opinion that said, basically, yeah, we, we illegally occupied it. Occupied it. Um, and I wanted to get his, his wording exactly right so I don't misquote him. But I think I think for whatever reason, as far as, as conservative as he is, this seems to be a pet issue for him. Um, because in the last uh, paragraph for that uh, Creek case, which was in 2020, um, he said the federal government promised the Creek a reservation in perpetuity. Over time, Congress has diminished that reservation. It has sometimes restricted and other times extended the tribe's authority. But Congress has never withdrawn the promised reservation. As a result, many of the arguments before us today follow a sadly familiar pattern. Yes, promises were made, but the price of keeping them has become too great. So now we should just cast a blind eye. We reject that thinking. If Congress wishes to withdraw its promises, it must do so. Unlawful acts performed long enough and with sufficient vigor are never enough to amend the law. To hold otherwise would be to elevate the most brazen and long-standing injustices over the law, both rewarding wrong and failing those in the right. So I'm assuming he's in the minority opinion on this. Uh, the the one I quoted, that was actually the court's majority opinion. He wrote it. Wow. That's actually surprising. I'm, I'm yeah. guessing it wasn't a vast... It, it, what was the split on that one? Um, I think that was a 5-4. He... Yeah, it feels about right. Yeah. Mike, if that's a majority, it's not a... That's not an overwhelming majority. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't exactly an overwhelming majority, but, I mean, it had massive impact. Like I said, it basically said that, no, 19 million acres of land, including most of Tulsa, is actually... Native American reservation. Func functionally, though, nothing will come of that decision, will it? Well, basically, uh, okay. So I went to go check. Um, in terms, it was, it was five four. Uh, Roberts, Alito, Kavanaugh, and Thomas dissented. Um, of course. But actually, no. It would be a big deal because if if a crime happens on native land, you don't go to state court. You go directly to federal court. And so what happened in this case, basically the guy was a horrible guy, be accused of sexual assault, all sorts of things. Um, but basically, for the last hundred or so years, every crime that was tried in Oklahoma state court, every one of those people gets a new trial now. Are they actually they moving, moving to do that? Uh, it would basically be up to each petitioner to mm. request it. Okay. It won't. It won't be automatic. But if they want, they could absolutely, you know, essentially file saying, "Hey, this was improper venue. Jurisdiction, jurisdictional authority is something that's never waived, right? Um, at least not subject matter jurisdiction. Personal jurisdiction can be waived. Um, but it would basically go like, no, the state court had no right to decide this. I demand my day in federal court. And yes, that's going to happen. And even the opinion, you know." 
uh, Gorsuch points to the minority and says, you know, they worry about this train of horribles and we'll have to undo all these cases. Basically, says tough yet. Um, that's one of the decisions that I want to see. I, proof the pudding is in the eating. I don't, I don't, when it comes to U.S. recognition of tribal sovereignty, I'm not, I'm not fucking 12. Like, yeah. Talk to, yeah, we'll, we'll talk, see to what talk to me in a decade. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what, what hoops it puts them through. Um, and actually how many people even take advantage of it. Yeah. Right. Um, the, because um, there are some people who are going to go like, it's really, am I going to benefit from having a federal trial for the exact same crime? Yeah. The, theoretically, it's good. Uh, give me a name, but uh, lots of things are theoretically good in this country and turn out fucking to murder people. So yeah. <laughs> this is, this is why I says I'm not 12. Talk to me in a decade when it comes to tribal sovereignty and recognition of tribal rights and, you know, promises and treaties and those sorts of things we've made. I'm super cynical. I'm super yeah. fucking cynical. I'm 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 way jaded about that shit at this point in my life. Um, the the um, the Commonwealth uh, federal benefits thing is, I mean, not surprising. We barely consider them people, let alone citizens. Um, so that's not surprising that 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 took that way. How did they come to that decision? What's what's the? Is it just because of how we like legally classify Commonwealth territories? That allows them to do that. Like, what was the what, what, uh, Yeah, yeah. So the, the difference is that basically the uh, like I said, it's a group of cases called the insular cases. The same way you have like the civil rights cases with Brown and stuff like that, okay. and that refer to all the territories from the Spanish American War. Um, but it basically divides it into two types of territories: there's incorporated territories and unincorporated territories, and we don't. I think. Puerto Rico might be the only unincorporated territory still left. Um, but basically it says that even if they're American citizens, by nature of their residency in the unincorporated territory, they lack some constitutional rights. Um, which is kind of odd because it means they could regain those rights by moving to the mainland and they wouldn't need a passport or anything. It's all America. Yeah, I'm like, wait, so, like, he could just move to Bron the Bronx or something, and he automatically regains it, doesn't he? Yeah, now, they would, in theory, still collect, uh, collect for the... Time back. that he w was spent uh, out out of, but... Yes. Yeah, but and basically their argument is, if you're in a territory that's going to become a state, is on the path to statehood, then you get all your constitutional rights. If you're in a place that is effectively a colony, right, it's going to be in sort of permanent territory status, then you have less constitutional rights and Congress has more broad power to infringe on your rights. Lovely. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, it's not nice. It's pretty, the, the actual language is very dread spot. I mean, it's, it's from the, I, dude, like, I, early... Nice every time I've 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 been in um, every time I've been in Puerto Rico, I talk to them. Right? I talk I talk to the fucking people. That's what I do. I talk to people, um, and it, the old guard like there seems to be a split. It's a generational split. Like, dude, <laughs> you need to shit or get off the pot, Puerto Rico. You need to shit or get off the pot. Either get the fuck out. And try and get your sovereignty back or get the fuck in and get statehood. Because you're getting fucked two different ways. Right? Yeah. Like you, you're, you're getting fucked two different ways. You're going to get fucked one way or the other. Right? So pick a dick and just take it. But right now, you're getting fucking double teamed. So, like, just pick a fucking direction. And, uh, you know, decide for yourselves. You know, fucking... Be 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 autonomous human beings and figure it out. But there seems to be this, such a generational split on this matter, and there doesn't seem to be any headway. Like the last I'd seen, there was ground being gained for um, statehood, 
the, 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 the statehood crew was making grounds. They were up to like 40 some odd percent or something in the last polling I had seen, but it's a fucking mess. Try it, 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 some some Puerto Ricans are like fuck the U.S. fuck that I don't want anything to do with statehood, and then there's ones that'll you know straight up like dude, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna be a fucking another country? Like we're we're already integrated into the U.S. system. You might as well take advantage of like we're already U.S. citizens. We're already you know we might as well take advantage of it and just get statehood. I, you know, it's not my call. It's not my position to make that call. The Puerto Ricans, you know, need to make that call for themselves, but they need to make that call because they seem to be just getting fucked every which way because they're not anything. They're in some weird nebulous legal, like, gray zone. Well, part of the reason I think that some people uh, would want to maintain this sort of balancing act is there actually economic incentives doing so. So while you lose certain constitutional rights by being an unincorporated territory, you also lack certain taxing burden. There, um, yeah, you know what that does? That creates a fucking gringo class that comes and buys up your fucking shoreline and uses you as a tax haven. And meanwhile, you're basically. Mean, but if you're the person who, for example, is selling that beachfront property, yeah, you like that idea. Yeah, that's that's some. Uh, <clears throat> dare I say that's some house negro shit? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like, um, homie, especially to, like I can't remember um which of the insular cases it was because there's a whole string of them. Um, but one of them like unambiguously said that these people are unworthy of rights because they cannot be trusted to govern themselves. They were like the phrase they used was alien races and savage tribes. Um, So to like rely on that to be like, Hey, but I don't have to pay property tax or some federal income tax. I'm not taxed for, I don't know what they actually don't pay. Um, but uh, yeah, I get to dodge some taxes and, and, and be a corporate haven, but it's only because they think I'm a savage. And I can't get Social Security when I'm old. I would call it a short-sighted trade-off. Um, like. Re- Rev, uh, Rev, a whole bunch of, uh, well, not a whole bunch, but there's like a handful, oh, of, oh. handful of states, right? Was it Kentucky, Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia, and Taxachusetts? Um, those are your, yeah. those are your four commonwealths. Um, and yeah, it's just a old timey name. It doesn't have any actual no. like legal designation. Yeah, it's it. it's fucking. It's just a it's a traditional British term for like what political community or something like that. Um. Yeah. So either way. Yeah. Um, but so at least with the court as it is, you know, you get some interesting blitz, right on, on the court. It, I think people are correct in sort of the general sense that they're conservative and liberal justices, although technically it applies to their interpretive positions, um, so long as they're honest actors, right? Some of them clearly are not. Um, but it does seem, at least with Gorsuch, for whatever reason, that he has a, a pet cause, and it is a lot of these racist laws that need clearing up, which previously Sotomayor was basically the only one fighting for um, I mean, it took until so the the first time a Supreme Court opinion ever used the word racist was, I believe, Justice Jackson's dissent to the Korematsu case, which was the one that allowed for Japanese internment. I mean, and that case did not get overruled till 2015. <laughs> credit credit where credits due. I mean, Gorsuch is. I mean, he got his JD from Harvard. He did his BA at Columbia. He got a doctorate of philosophy with a degree in law from Oxford. He's a Marshall scholar. Like the dude isn't, he's not fucking running on a deficit, right? Yeah. Like he's not, he's not an idiot. He's not fucking uh, Kavanaugh, right? Like he's, he's, yeah. he's not a beer bro. I mean, the dude has a legitimate foundational like yeah he's a trump nominee for sure but like holy shit like he's got an education behind him at least yeah and yeah and i mean i think his his role to me as a conservative seems a little bit more uh 
overstated in the sense that I, I view him much more like a Robert sort of, of justice. Right? So one of the reasons why uh, Roberts is super obsessed with making the court seem non-political is literally since, you know, the time of Jefferson, the concern is basically, hey, the court doesn't have an army. Technically, the court can call on all lawyers to arm themselves, but um, that would that would good help. Luck. Good, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so the idea is basically only if people respect them do they listen to them. So there's a level of pragmatism that goes into sort of let's not anger people too much. So it may be that Gorsuch is just doing sort of like, you know, what we would consider more like a classic uh, – Romney sort of thing, right? Where, okay, I'll do your Black Lives Matter march so long as you don't riot, but I'm still going to be a corporatist, right? I mean, his most famous case before the Supreme Court was one where he said that a worker could be fired for abandoning a broken down uh, semi truck in it, freezing temperatures. <laughs> so, not a good guy. I. <sighs> I got some issues here of looking at like what he is qualified and classified as like he's a he's an advocate of natural law jurisprudence pass um you know textualist statutory interpretations and originalism uh yeah you can miss me with that shit too um but like you know I mean we I ha- will say we have philosophical opinions but I don't I can't look down on him like, yeah that's 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 a big deal. So yeah, he's not too terrible. He is pretty obnoxious, though. I think there is a divide, though, that I would sort of wedge between originalism and textualism, although they often sort of are paired together. Um, which is there's a bunch of different interpretations of both, but the super simple version would be originalism is that the meaning of the words was fixed at the time the words came into effect, whether that be the Constitution, an amendment, or a statute. Um, and it should be based off of the public understanding of the meaning, right? Whereas textualism is sort of the idea, it gives primacy to the text, but doesn't necessarily hold to what the word meant in the 1850s. Sub, sir. Right? So, like, uh, that, that case that extended uh, employment discrimination protection for trans and gay people was prefaced on the idea that, hey, the Civil Rights Act says you can't be discriminated against because of your sex. The the test we have for that is if this person was a different sex, would the outcome be different? And they go like, well, yeah, that's what that word means. doesn't matter what they thought it meant in the 1970s. doesn't mean that, you know, they, they drafted broad language. That means we have latitude. Whereas the originalists would say, no, clearly, you know, we can go and find out exactly what this guy meant in 1974. And we have to you apply do, you do, un- you do understand why people have nothing but contempt for your chosen profession, right? Oh, God, yes. Okay. Just, I just, <laughs> just, just, just wanted to clear that up really quickly and make sure you understand that, like, we all hate every last bit of this with our souls. <laughs> like, Pity, I find it fun. I, 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 I know you. I know you do, and I'm perver- perverted enough in the head to understand that. And a different route, I might may have may have ended up with a law degree as well, uh, with a poli sci minor. But uh, I fortunately I'm not broken enough, um, so I didn't end up with a law degree. Yeah, but yeah, I, I mean, you can take it multiple ways, right? So like uh, uh, Ginsburg was kind of a textualist. That was why she got along with Scalia so much. Right, so you could you can get to unatrocious outcomes with textualism if you want. Um, originalism is a little bit harder. Uh, I had a weird shower. I had a weird shower thought about uh, th- shower. I had a weird shower thought question about originalism. As the amendments are made later, are the originalists against the Second Amendment? Says Wolana. So originalism focuses on the time of enactment. So unless – actually, it wouldn't even matter because no. if it's in the Constitution, it can't clash. It, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so whenever – whatever the Second Amendment meant when the Second Amendment was adopted is what holds rather than when the original Constitution was adopted. So um, – yeah. I don't know if you're talking about Clarence Thomas as in 
be, because I'm black, or because that's his philosophy. Because Clarence Thomas is a whole different beast. I George mean, Clarence I don't even philosophy. need to like. We don't even need to have a discussion about Clarence Thomas as a, as you know uh, as a jurist. He's just a piece of shit human being. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I. <laughs> That's I. I, I every once in a while, I would read like a Scalia or John Cornyn, even though he's in the Senate now. I get to the end of one of their opinions and be like, okay, fine, I can accept that. I don't know if I've ever agreed with Clarence Thomas. Dude, he's a piece of shit. Yeah, like in no, that, he's, he's, he's an asshole, and he's not uh, really distinguished as a lawyer, he's, right? Like. I, yeah, oh, yeah, like, fucking, like, some of these fucking, I mean, Ginsburg, Gorsuch, like, some of these people have, like, credentials behind them. No matter how you feel about them, you're like, god damn, they put in the work. Like, you know, Thomas shouldn't even be on the court. He's in that Kavanaugh camp. They, you're yeah. like, yeah. what he, you- he went from, um, in 1990, being the chair of the EEOC, Equal Opportunity Employment Commission, to being on the Supreme Court in 1992. Is that... Like, is, literally the only person more is, unqualified is, than is, him might be Tony Barrett. Is that... Is that, like, literally the definition of a diversity hire? <laughs> yeah, it, it was to replace Marshall. And they couldn't very well not pick a black guy for that. Yeah. It's literally, like, everything that people scream about, like, the right screams about, like, diversity hires, Thomas is that. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it works out, right? So, like, O'Connor was explicitly a diversity hire. He's more conservative than me. But, like, with Gorsuch, right? It's sort of like, no, she's smart. I've got to give her that. At the very least, she's fucking good. Right? Oh. Thomas, I literally just think it's because, like, he's an ideologue and they just needed someone who was black to be a conservative. Also, the fact that he's, he's you know, got rapey vibes is always, he fits in. Yeah. He fits in. <laughs> Now, to be fair, I believe it was sexual harassment. Yeah. Which... Rapey vibes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Rapey vibes. <laughs> it's that simple. Oh, oh fuck it. Eh? Yeah, Thomas is, dude, did that, I think, like, the, the who you are as a human being informs who you are as a jurist. Right? Yeah. Like, that's, and Thomas is a piece of shit human being. And so he's a piece of shit judge, right? Like, you can you can get people, you have ideological and philosophical differences. Like, Gorsuch is a per- perfect example of that. Like, I don't agree with this dude on a lot of shit. But the fact of the matter is, is that, like, I'd never come at him. Right? He's qualified. He's credentialed. He's, you know, near the top in his field. Hey, you know, we just have ideological differences. Thomas, on the other hand, shouldn't even be a fucking judge, let alone a Supreme Court judge and has no business being there, let alone fucking not being in prison for some rapey ass sexual harassment shit he constantly gets up to. Oh, and his wife is psychotic. Yeah, well, that <laughs> yeah. that doesn't help. Yeah. He- um, I mean, that's the thing. Even before he was on the Supreme Court, he was on the Court of Appeals for D.C., which is generally considered the most powerful court aside from the Supreme Court, and he had no judicial experience before that. Yeah. So, like, I could, basically, I could pick any one of you guys, put you through three years of law school, and then put you, apparently, on the yeah. Court of Appeals for D.C., yeah. where he has literally every case about the federal government. It's insane. It, yes, Beast, it is actually affirmative action from Republicans. No. Yeah, yeah. unironically. It's, 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 he's a diversity hire. 100%. And it's, it's the wackiest shit to see. Like, and dude, he's, he's constantly coming out with like just opinions and he says shit. And you're like, really? Like, you- so for, for chat's sake, cause Kai, you may know this, right? But, uh, um, Thomas and Bill Barr, uh, believe in something called a, a, a unitary executive theory. And it's basically the idea that, checks and balances was wrong <laughs> and the idea is just like non-overlapping domains of power <laughs> so basically you, you know that that when the president does it it's not illegal that but unironically yeah we yeah yeah thomas thomas believes in the like the all-powerful executive branch yeah yeah that's I, I forget which justice was was making fun of the idea and they basically said uh we are asked to believe that the president is a king but for only four years at a time yeah 
Um, fucking uh, Mr. said, uh, was Cav the one who tried to gaslight the world on the question of boofing? Yes, Kavanaugh was the one who tried to gaslight the world on the question of boofing. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know how much of a... I actually don't know that much about his history. I never read any of his cases. All I know is I read his first opinion, and it was masturbatory as shit. Like he, I think he unironically starts off by like quoting the Star Spangled Banner or the Declaration of Independence. Like, well, fuck the dude. Um, he was Kavanaugh was also a um a DC uh, circuit judge. Yeah, that's where a lot of them pull from. Uh, Katanji Brown Jackson, I think, is Ginsburg. I think was, yeah, yeah. It's he, considered the pipeline. So, um, he um. I mean, he's he's a uh, Kavanaugh's a Yale slash Federalist. Like he's he's Federalist Society, and he's he's Georgetown and uh, he's Georgetown Prep and Yale, I believe. Um, and yeah, he uh, fucking <laughs> I think he's got he doesn't even have like he's not really like he's definitely not like Gorsuch credentialed, right? Like he's got like a BA in history or something like that, and then he's got his law degree. Um, but not, not an exemplary student, not a fucking Marshall or a Rhodes scholar, not fucking, you know, an Oxford graduate, not like, you know, yeah, he's, he's, he's essentially like, he's a Federalist Society guy and he's a, he's a Yale law grad. Um, and I forget who he clerked for. Um, it wasn't a supreme. It wasn't a justice. Well, yeah, it was. A, it was like an appeals court. Is who he. I think for. that's totally fine, depending on who the judge is, right? So, for example, I know Robert clerked for Learned Hand, um, who was a court of appeals judge, second or first district. I forget which one. Um, and he was basically the most brilliant man to never sit on the Supreme Court. <laughs> right, um, so it, it it spoke very highly of Roberts that he worked with Hand. Walter, um, oh, lovely Walter King Stapleton. He was a Nixon appointee. Oh, okay. Be fair. Or a, a, a Nixon nomination, I should say. Um. Uh oh, uh, Nixon and Reagan. John. Yeah, so he well, cl- he clerked for a guy that fucking was a uh, a circuit court um third uh, uh third circuit, um yeah. yeah who was who was a choice by both Nixon and Reagan so you know that slightly means less because well, I mean one of the things about the third circuit is none of their rulings are precedential unless decided in on bonk. Right, all together. Oh, and um, um, Kavanaugh worked for Ken Starr. Uh, yes, so did Robert, and I think Gorsuch as well. Fuck all of them. No, no, no. No, actually, you know what? I think uh, Roberts and Gorsuch were on the Bush v. Gore team. That's that's what they did. Kav- Kavanaugh was a principal author of the Starr Report. Yeah. I had no idea. He he oh, yeah. he was the principal author of the Star Report, in which he argued for fucking blowjob equals impeachment. Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's not a he's not a great guy. I mean, it used to be up until fairly recently that the way you got a federal judgeship was by being an academic. It was by being a jurist, right? So you get people like Oliver Wendell Holmes, right? Uh, who is the one who wrote. That infamous, you know, you can't yell fire mm-hmm. in a crowded movie theater, which, which I would like you all, just a personal favor to me, forget to stop quoting. Yeah, please, yeah. please, you're using it wrong when you yeah. say it. you're using it wrong, and it drives lawyers nuts. So you know when yeah. you, it, it, it's not even, it's not even really talking about freedom of speech in that way. Like it's, it's just stop, stop saying it, please. You, 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 you're ca- or continue doing it, and just know that you just caused an, an attorney somewhere to have an aneurysm. Just somewhere in the distance, and a lawyer just like burst a blood vessel because you said that shit. Just know that Oliver Wendell Holmes, like you can you can still go read his stuff. Like he he wrote a bazillion things because I mean literally up until Robert Bork, I mean he was a, a Supreme Court nominee. It was it was basically all jurists. It was a bunch of people who you know people who like wrote uh, the Uniform Commercial Code and shit like that. Those were the people who got federal judgeships. 
now it's people like Kavanaugh, where it's like, okay, he was, I think he was a, a, a like a press aide in the White House before he became a federal judge. It's insane. Um, let's see. Um, public the uh, the phrase "scouting fire in a crowded theater." Um, for one thing, it's it's from a case that has been overruled. Yeah, has been overruled since the eighties. Br- Br- it's uh, not oh, part of the ruling. Six, six, 69. <laughs> Is it sixty nine. Sixty nine. Sixty nine. Brand Brandenburg v. Ohio. Sixty nine. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. That's a good song. It, it, um, yeah, it, it literally, it doesn't, it's not, you're allowed to, you're, you're function, you're allowed to yell fire in a crowded theater. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the thing is, it wasn't even part of the actual, like, law. It was just sort of like an off-the-cuff example that Holmes tried to give to talk about, like, speech that could, well, the phrase we use now is incite imminent lawless action. That is Brandenburg. Um, but... Yeah, there's all sorts of reasons you can you can do stuff like that. Yeah, um, from Brandenburg, the constitutional uh, held the Supreme Court held the Constitution guarantees uh, the constitutional guarantees of free speech and free press do not f- permit a state to forbid or prescribe advocacy of the use of force or law violation except where such advocacy is directed to inciting or producing imminent lawless action and is likely to incite or produce such action. The, and so there's what they call tests. The Brandenburg test that comes into play. Like, this is fucking lawyer speak territory, right? And so, you know, you would apply a Brandenburg test to somebody's actions. And does it does it rise to that occasion? Does it ri- does it meet that? Um, so, you know, yeah. Pretty strict. I mean, it's part of the reason why you can... I mean, I, I understand why people got frustrated, but it's part of the reason why Trump and the Republicans have been able to engage in sort of, you know, stochastic speech for so long, right? It's because vague allusions to things like Second Amendment remedies, there's there's no understanding that Trump's going to say that, and then 15 minutes later, someone's going to pull out news. Hmm. Um, in 2006, love him or hate him in 2006, Christopher Hitchens started a a debate on free speech by screaming fire, 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 fire in a crowded theater. Like that's, that's literally like how that was his opening statement was fire, 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 fire. And then it was something like, now you've heard it. Yeah. Right. Like that's, it, 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 it isn't. It doesn't mean what you think it means. It wasn't used in the context you think it was used. It doesn't <laughs> apply in the way you think it applies, and it drives lawyers nuts when it, because it's a common idiom at this point. Yeah, yeah it's unfortunate, too. Um, well, I mean, to be fair, there are a lot of things like that that, you know, uh, annoy the pedants. Uh, so that's most lawyers. Um like, you know, the fact that, for example, Roe v. Wade isn't the controlling case law on abortion. It's Planned Parenthood v. Casey from the 90s. Like, that, like, the, the fire in a crowded theater one actually misinforms people, right? Because then people could actually be in danger, right? It's sort of like when you tell people, oh, you, you know, the cops can't uh, make you get out of your car, right? Um, without, like, arresting you, which is a thing I've heard. Like, and and by the way, people's fear of shouting fire in a crowded theater has killed hundreds of people. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. Uh, the Brooklyn theater fire um, was uh, the the staff was so concerned about um, causing panic by sh- by letting people know there's a fucking fire in the goddamn theater, right? That they uh, they pretended uh, the the fire was a part of the performance. It delayed the evacuation, and it was two hundred some odd deaths because of it. Of course, of yeah. course it was. Yeah, the shouting fire in a crowded theater, the idiom and the public misunderstanding of it has actually killed hundreds of people. <laughs> well, I mean, funnily enough, so you, you know, you tut, but that is sort of the, the conservative argument for a lot of a lot of law is basically like you, you should not need to go to a lawyer or a judge to understand the law because the whole point of it is to regulate 
people's behavior. If they don't know what the fuck the law means, if they have to go to like some, mm -hmm. you know, basically a shrouded room where a, a judge a, reads tea it's leaves a, it's to a tell you class. what a statute means. It's a, yeah, you, it's a priest class. It's, yeah, basically. Yeah. It's, I don't know what the Bible says because it's written in some magic language. And so I have to go to a priest to interpret it and tell me and take in good faith that what they're telling me is a priest class. So lawyers and judges are a priest class. Yeah. I mean, the, ex the example I always go to is, um, you know, there was a, a Supreme Court case with uh, some guy engaged in a drug deal, right? Um, and he had, I think he traded the gun for drugs. He had a handgun. Um, and he got hit with a, a enhancement of like 15 years because of the statute that says you can't use a gun as part of a drug deal. And Scalia went like, well, they meant use like fire, like use it like a firearm, they, not no, as a bargaining chip. Yeah, nobody was thinking of them as like in trade and currency. <laughs> Yeah, he, he actually even quips. He was like, if someone asks me, do I use a cane? And I respond, yes, I use it to decorate my bathroom wall. It's like, of course, I'm like being duplicitous. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's yeah. fucking, there's, there's all sorts of examples of that shit in our society that you're like, really? Like, I, I, dude, Black's, Black's Law is terrifying to me. There's this right. di there's this dictionary of words that is like um, parallel to what our dictionary the the common dictionary right and there's this entire structure there's this hierarchy and bureaucracy created that has the power to take our lives by the way is fully yeah. empowered by the monopolization of the force of state right um. And you guys have your own definitions. And yeah. like that freaks me the fuck out. And it's like, how do I get a hold of like a current edition of Black's Law? Uh, you got a couple of grand? Like what's a current edition of Black's Law cost? It's like 800, 1200 bucks? They're not cheap. No, no, no. It's, it, it's fine. It, uh, a current edition, edition um, I think one thirteen is like 180 bucks. Oh, it's not what's bad. It's come down. Yeah, I was saying, what's expensive to... are the quarters, right? So... Court opinions are public domain uh, because it's produced by the government. Um, but there are private companies that bind court opinions in like books um, or on searchable websites with like commentary and explanatory notes. Um, there are even like professional organizations like the American Law Institute, for example, is a bunch of really august lawyers and judges and law professors who get together to like recommend different changes to the law, right? There's a model penal code, there's a model orphans code, stuff like that, right? Buying those things. Because at first I was like, oh, I would really like to have what's called a restatement, right? It, it explains different areas of the law. I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing some health law stuff. I need to have, you know, the restatement on things like, you know, malpractice and i go to look it up that shit's five thousand dollars and i don't know why because you know why <laughs> they're trying to keep the the common folk out of it so it's a it's a capital gate uh, i just looked yeah. up yeah it's a, a 150 bucks for the current yeah, edition which is well. good on good on uh but if, if more than fifty five thousand terms um mm -hmm. all of which have Sometimes bespoke definitions, sometimes slightly different definitions, and sometimes overlapping definitions. But there is this entire bureaucracy that has is empowered to up to and including taking your life in some instances, and they use their own bespoke language. Sounds exactly like your language. In most instances, there's a lot of Latin sprinkled through there. But in most instances, it sounds a lot like the shit you're saying. Only it doesn't mean that. And you need somebody who's been schooled in it and experienced in it to interpret it for you, as Marcus said, some tea leaves bullshit, right? Like you, you don't know what is actually being said and you can't, you can't reference it. You can't access it. You don't know about it. And yet it's, it's always there. It's this ever-present threat off in the distance. And the people who actually enforce it, brass tacks, do they don't have to know about it either. The, the oh, yeah. The cops don't, they legally don't have to know about it. Like, they can just make it up on the fly. Yeah, I mean, the whole point of, of qualified immunity, um, which 
people have distorted now is literally a good faith misapplication of the law. So if a cop arrests you for something they think is illegal because they heard some pop culture myth, but they're wrong, you don't get to sue them. You know what your remedy is? You get let out of prison. That's it. Um, they changed. Uh, it was okay. So the good faith interpretation, the good faith is. qualifier, went out the window with uh, who was it? Um, Harlow v. Uh, Fitzgerald. Uh, yeah. Um, that's when they ditched the good faith qualifier and they adopted um, the, whether or not the victim could show their, quote, right was clearly established despite whether an official acted maliciously or not. Um, so they. Well, so, OK. Um, yes. The, the only reason I'm, I'm quibbling is because the clearly established thing does matter. The problem is that clearly established is essentially used to justify should the cop had known they were violating your rights. And the reason why I say that is because often courts will, in, well, it depends on the circuit, will interpret it so narrowly, oh. they'll go, you know, wrapping someone in barbed wire was clearly established to be wrong, but not wrapping them in barbed wire and then tasering them so the cops didn't have any way of knowing. Yeah. I, I'm seeing I'm seeing the specific language as specific context and particular conduct. Yeah, which uh, is insane. So that's that that, that yeah they, they we had a case we talked about for Popo's bizarre adventures I don't know a couple of weeks ago, um, where the cops were arguing I forget what they argued that like they didn't know they couldn't rape somebody or some shit like that. Like it was, oh, it, yeah, 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 it was, it was literally like, how are we supposed to know we didn't, we couldn't do that? It was some insanity. I don't know if it was rape or whether it was theft or something. It was just something clearly illegal. The, the, the cops were like, oh yeah, like they made a qualified immunity plea based on it. And they're like, how are we supposed to know we weren't supposed to do that? It's like, um, because you arrest people for doing it. Mental. It's absolutely mental. Um, I will say real quick, uh, Patronum, when you talk about those websites are expensive to access, yes, they are. Yes, they are. The one I use is LexisNexis. Nah. Which, is which, 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 which subscription pack? What do you, what do you subscribe I, to? I, I use a, a personalized one, so maybe, I get, maybe it's like $800. Oof. Maybe a little bit a more. Month, a month. Because I know. I remember when Swede told me what his was. Mine was a fraction of it. And I was like, "Oh, thank God." Yeah, yeah. Fucking Swede's packed out with all of the shit. Um, yeah. But like, but yeah, those things are super, super fucking expensive. But like you said, they should all be viewable for free. The only, the, the, literally, the thing that you pay for with those is explanations and links to other relevant cases. Right. And that's how it ends up being useful. You know, I, I, I end up with some particular motion on my desk and I'm told, like, OK, figure out if this person is bullshitting. Lexus lets me like daisy chain through a whole bunch of sources to read that are going to be relevant throughout history. Yeah, it's I mean, it's a good course. But holy shit, man, is it a fucking grift and a half, man? Lexus fucking accounts are just ridiculous. That you're just like, uh, how much a month? <laughs> it gets in that Bloomberg terminal territory. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah. And, you know, Bloomberg has one, too. Bloomberg has one, too. Bloomberg has one. Um, they So you can find, I think it's every publicly traded company, every uh, contract they have has to be filed with the SEC. And it's it's written like something out of the 1970s. It's terrible. All Bloomberg does is scrape that website and put uh, put it into a more accessible functionality. Done. And they charge thousands of dollars for it. Yeah. Uh, Patronum uh, Patronum said I think it was sex or rape with a detainee, but the, their memory isn't that great. Um, I yeah. dude, I think it was. It was like rape or some shit. That it's like the cops were like, "How are we supposed to know we're not supposed to rape prisoners?" It's like I mean, yeah, the two options that come to mind is if it was a prisoner, because you can't consent by default, um, but people still try and do it anyway. Or the other one I think I was arguing with the dude a couple days ago about, uh, which is like if you are a cop and you're trying to bust a sex worker, you used to be able to have sex with them to prove that they were a sex worker. I do not know if that is still the case. Um, it's, but it's, when it was, it's 
state. It was kind of right. It's state dependent. Of course it is. Um, and <laughs> Che, because Che's fucking Brit Bonger, um, it's still legal in the UK for cops to rape you if they do it as part of an under, undercover operation. Yeah. So, yeah, I, like, yeah, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of shit that like the, the fucking I know there was a case that was making the rounds in the UK a few years back where like undercover cops had a bunch of illegitimate kids yeah that they were just they, you know fucking they were ba- they were banging random random chicks like while they were undercover and then just disappear once the operations wrapped up and they're just leaving women with the fucking kids and stuff and it's like yeah yeah the Mets got like a bunch of illegitimate kids running around Oh, yeah, states' rights, Patronum. States' rights. Um, uh, I mean, it, it is rough. To be fair, if, if you can, um, that is, I guess, part of the blessing and curse of the, the federal system, right? Which is that even though the, the remit of the federal government has ballooned since FDR, not always a bad thing, um, there's still lots of shit that the federal government won't touch, right? So, like, if you, for example, if you want to go into federal court, a couple ways you can do it. Like I said, you can be on a native land. Um, you can have uh, diversity jurisdiction, right? Whereas uh, I'm from Virginia, you're from California, and neither one of us wants to sue in state court because we might have home team advantage. But if, if you're, you know, there's a there's a money limit. You have to, in good faith, allege damages of at least $75,000 and one cent. <laughs> I love those sorts of arbitrary numbers. Uh, yeah. A fucking, uh, let's see. Is there any, I guess I had something related to you, but either way. Um, fuck. Oh yeah. No, not related to you, but I want to talk about that. Um, yeah, it's, Dude, I, I, your entire profession freaks me the fuck out. <laughs> but I mean, it it starts with having a a judge as a stepdad, right? Like that's where that that's where that fucking starts. <laughs> Is watching watching him toss a chick into county for three weeks for um, swearing in his courtroom in Arizona. Yeah, that's. I'm sorry. What? Can I was gonna say? Yeah, the contempt powers are insane. I I will. So look, I have all sorts of criticisms for the judge that I I helped out with. Um, I spent more than a few mornings literally having shouting matches with her. But one thing I did respect is the entire time I dealt with her, she never used her contempt powers. That's no matter how difficult the person was. That's something at least. Yeah. Like that. I mean, to the point where like we would, we would get sovereign citizens that would place like $10 million liens on the house. And she would just be like, no, I'll just recuse and I'll refer it to the president judge. I'm not touching this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh... Um, but I mean, you, you do see. I mean, so it's part of the reason why I really, really, in doing the info store thing, wanted to add, well, not just do it in general so people can be a little bit, you know, better prepared, um, but especially to add in the jurisprudence section. Because, like, so for example, Richard Posner. Uh, who's a Seventh Circuit judge? Very, very famous. Um, he advocates for something called pragmatism, right? Which is not like an interpretive style, um, but it's the idea that the courts shouldn't even pretend that what they're doing is applying or interpreting the law. They're just better than you, and they should do what they think is right for society. Oh, Jesus Christ. And he's got a lifetime position. <laughs> of course, of course he does. Of course he does. And if you don't, if you guys don't know, there's a fucking extensive legal section on the info store section, courtesy of Marcus. Um, hashtag uh, not legal advice. Um, yeah, you got please. <laughs> it's all prefaced with that bullshit. No fucking yeah. not not legal advice. But there's a very extensive legal section, courtesy of Marcus. Um, so if you've got, if you're curious and you, you want to see, um, by all means, that's <laughs> it's up there. Um, yeah, the contempt powers always freaked me out. Like he could just hold you in contempt of court. And just you're fucked. You're just fucked. Like <sighs> there seemed to be no recourse, really. <laughs> 
Like it was just sort of powerful. If it gets enough and you lodge a complaint, then maybe the judge will get a public reprimand, right? But like as a general rule, it's it's for a lawyer or a judge, it's really easy to get in trouble. It's really hard to get in any sort of trouble that actually matters to you, though. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's... It, it, I, oh, the whole fucking thing, man. The whole fucking thing is just broken mess. And, you know, good on you for trying to sort... To unt- untangle some of those Christmas tree lights. Uh, yeah. But I mean, that's why I don't want to stay in any sort of active work for too long. I want to go to academia um, because it's it's fascinating. I think it's important. But dear God in heaven, yeah. right? Some of the stuff. Some of the stuff. Yeah, it's um, it's absolutely ridiculous to deal with this stuff. Like I think I I might have mentioned to you. You know, I, I live like right next door to my local courthouse, so that's what I do in my free time. Um, you just go over and sit on, walk. sit in on trials. Yeah. Um, and I remember seeing one judge in chambers. There was a, a motion to dismiss, um, a whole bunch of stuff and for various legal reasons, it, it, it was the exact ordering of events that happened during this traffic stop. Right? you know, did, was this question that elicited incriminating information, you know, permissible and all that kind of stuff. And, um, I remember sitting down and, and telling the judge, like, look, I think all of this has to be let in. But the cop clearly fucked with this dude. Despite the fact that I think it was totally real, he was just being a piece of shit, right? And as it ended up happening, the judge basically went, like, you know, pointed to me and basically said, like, the only, like, Marcus would get asked that question. None of us would. Right, and so one of the felony charges went because the judge wanted to show his disapproval with the cops. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of not okay. Like, all right, I'm I'm glad for that guy that it happened, but uh, you know that that is Posnerian or whatever, right? That's a that level of I don't care whether it's legal or not. There's no one that checks me. Yeah, it's it's. It's a route with no recourse. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, Jesus. I, uh, I'll, I'll warn all of you in chat to just not engage with that polify person. They're in one insane two. They operate in bad faith, but they're, they're insane. They believe Kyle Rittenhouse was a Sandy hook victim and a crisis actor. Like, they're insane. Just just know what you're dealing with if you dip your toe into, into that pool of crazy. Heads up. Um, I would argue that he acted at some point, even on camera, but that's something different. Yes. Um, so, you know, understand how, how stupid, you know. When you, you try and stoop down to stupid and you're like, holy shit, the dude's going to just beat you with experience on this one. He's way more stupid than any of you guys could even pretend to be for a second. Um, so, at some point, it's almost impressive. It is. It is. Occasionally, you know, they they come out with a take that like the uh, the apples take for Swede and capitalism was the, the stuff of legend. Um, and so, you know, occasionally they they do something just absolutely batshit insane. You're like, all right, you know what? Golf clap. Right. <laughs> like that's that's a new bar. That's a new bar. Yeah. But, you know, that's just some standard AJ shit. That's not even creative. That's just Alex Jones level. And AJ's already got that covered. Like that's Alex Jones has Alex Jones crazy covered. You got to bring something new to the party. You got to, you know, you got to reinvent the game. If you're going to fucking do something, you got to step up. He just, you know, he just spouts off about fucking crisis actors and shit like that. It's boring. Um, But, you know, fair heads up. Um, So, yeah. 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 So I, I I wanted to highlight the Gorsuch thing specifically. I think it's it's interesting, and it may be that um, the tide on that is turning. Every once in a while, you get judges with real weird one-offs. Um, for example, Thomas once said that actually the federal marijuana laws might be unconstitutional. Um, but at least with Gorsuch, this seems to be a pattern. So we may wind back some of the colonialism. Ah, you gotta get the rest of him in on it first. So, yeah, 
Well, Gor- you've got at least two. Yeah. You've got Sotomayo and Gorsuch. Yeah, Gorsuch might fucking have a pet cause, but he needs to get other people. I would love to... Um, I'd love to be privy to a conversation of the Supremes, right? Like, I'd love to see their discourse. That that I don't, would, yeah, no, you you do you, yeah, you don't like you do fucking you do. I would love to be a fly on the wall for one of those conversations. Like, how do these people interact? Everything I've heard about them, at, le- at least the, okay. So I've never met any of them. I know people who have. Every one of them is that. Um, is it what? Asshole. As an asshole. Apparently, yeah. I mean, yeah, Sotomayor is apparently like super passive aggressive. Alito is a massive arrogant piece of shit. Um, Thomas doesn't shut up. Apparently, even Marshall was a massive douchebag in real life. I mean, you're you've got a lifetime position, right? <laughs> you're fucking. Yeah. I'm at, I mean, you know, it's a license to be an asshole. Yeah, I'm the most. You don't have to do it. But, like, I knew someone who met, um, uh, God, uh, Rendell, Governor Rendell's ex-wife is a federal judge in the Third Circuit. And, yeah, apparently she's super affable and, you know, does the thing, don't call me judge, call me midge, let's talk, let's sit down, right? But, like, apparently, like, people like Alito will literally get mad if you look them in the eye. (laughs) That makes sense for him. That makes sense for him. It really does. Yeah. Um, it feels right. It feels right. He feels like that kind. Um, yeah, I just, yeah. you know, yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to see them interact with each other. Like it's probably all done through staff. Like it's all done through paperwork and shit. And they just refuse to talk to each other. Yeah. I mean, there were some chief justices that were good at it. Um, I cannot for the life of me. I think it might've been burger. It was one judge from the 20th century. Uh, I am from the Northeast. Uh, there was one judge from the 20th century when asked what his greatest legal skill was. He said, I know how to count to five. Um, right? Famously, the... Uh, smart the goal, ass, the I US, What's that? I said smart ass, I love it. <laughs> um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Justice Marshall. You know, the, the, the yeah. guy who... Uh, was I think the third chief justice basically made the court what it is today. Famously, was such a control freak um, that he forced all decisions to be unanimous, right? And so he was the sort of person who was like, "No, no one is leaving this goddamn room until we all agree on an opinion." Um, and no, for, no for, just raised them. I mean, he's got the look. Here's here's Marshall for anybody that fucking wants to know. Here's their good. Um, he, 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 good Marshall. Uh, John Marshall. John Marshall. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thomas Jefferson's cousin. Oh Jesus Christ! Um, that dude. His fuck. Fo- he's he doesn't. He's so far back. He's not even gonna have a picture. He's gonna have a fucking um, painting. Yeah. Well, that's what they did with um, I, U.S. v. Nixon. I would like it's it's a, it's a Frankenstein opinion because they wanted it to be unanimous, and so they just went like. You know, I would point out this. Comes from different judge. I Sorry, would point out that this motherfucker even has the the alcoholic's red nose in his painting. Just saying, they they even got the the fucking red nose going on in the painting. Probably ha- liked a good snifter of brandy. I should put it that way. It would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um. But hey, he he was he was extremely like frighteningly clever. Um, you don't always get that with, with judges, but there are definitely some him. Uh, the other one that comes to mind is uh, Felix Frankfurter, who was a judge during like the FDR years. That's that's one of those types of people where you read them and you're like, oh, no, this is what the Supreme Court is for. This is like once in a generation sort of mind. And then you get people like Thomas. Yeah, and Marshall was um, – John Marshall was um... – Leader of the Federalist Party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He swore in seven presidents. Yeah. A maniac. So, uh, well, thanks for hanging out, Mark. Uh, thank you for hanging out, Marcus. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thanks for uh, thanks for letting me randomly nerd out. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, fucking as well as we have to, we have to let you attorneys get it off your chest from time to time, or else you guys go crazy. 
<clears throat> yeah. And then you, then you drinking in a corner, muttering, muttering about something, uh, helping, pa helping pass some law that denies citizenship to like a whole swath of people or something. Fuck them, fuck them all. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. All right, man. I, I Give you to the rest of your stream, then. I, I swear I'll get around to reading that that memo one of these days. I swear I will. I haven't forgotten. I just, dude, there's so much shit on the list. Yeah, no, fine. It's, it's only like three pages. I, I think I actually restrained myself. <laughs> and a, what are the most a, I write? An, an attorney on uh, three pages. Hey, look, that that's restrained. <laughs> that's restrained. Oh, all right, man. I'll catch you later. Everybody, Marcus, our resident attorney. Um, to uh, does that include the judge has to stay too? Or is it, uh, then I, I, dude, I can't. Dude, that's a mangled sentence. Um, let's see. All right. So is uh, what's his name gone? Yeah, I wanna. I wanna just. Where was that person? There we go. Get through to that one. Yeah, the eat a bullet person. They gotta go. And there we go. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ah. Uh, MIT predicted society would collapse by 2040. New data tells us how we're doing. Um, method indicated the fall would be some point between uh, near the middle of the 21st century, around 2040, and so far the predictions have been on track, new analysis suggests. Uh, first analysis was done in 1972, but they still have p teams working on it. Um, let's see, who's in charge of it right now? Harrington? Uh, in Harrington's estimates, the world population, industrial output, food, and resources will rapidly decline. The 2100s will be comparable to the 1900s. Um, <laughs> whole bunch. Jesus Christ. These are actually some big fucking names attached to these analyses. This is not like just somebody's fucking pet project. Holy shit. Yeah, there's a bunch of names associated this with this from the Club of Rome. Oh, Swede sent me that. So I wanted to talk about um, Right wingers are now attacking um, LGBT youth suicide hotlines. That's now a thing that they're 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 attacking. They um, they are attempting to go after things like the Trevor Project. They're trying to go after. I mean, and you know, I mean, it's all the typical fucking names that you would associate with this sort of shit. Moms for Liberty, Lauren Chen, fucking pick your fucking congressman, senator, douchebag. Um, and yeah, they're, they're, of course, they're using the like grooming shit as usual. Um, see the projection. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that like, you know, we've got a list a mile fucking long. Um, so, you know, we've, we've got triple digits of Republican kid fuckers. Uh, how dare you prevent the quid, uh, queer kids from killing themselves? I know, right? Um, we got, we got triple digits of Republican kid fuckers, kid touchers, and fucking general diddlers. So, of course, they, you know, project all the time with the fucking grooming shit because they're continuing. The Republican Party is basically the party of groomers at this point. Um, so, of course, they're constantly yelling about it. Um, we, like I said, we, we've got a list. We've, we've got a fucking list and it's already well into triple digits and it's only going to keep growing because I'm not even halfway done with assembling the list that I have on, uh, the discord server. 
And I mean, just take your fucking pick. Like it's, you know, child molestation, child molestation, child pornography, child molestation, child molestation, child porn, child porn, child porn, sexual misconduct with students, fucking first degree sexual abuse, enticement of 14 year old, fucking blah, 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 child pornography, child pornography, it's like alcohol to minors playing strip pokers strip poker with minors child pornography child molestation raping a, a woman since she was nine until she was 23 uh, fucking sex tourism in Thailand for underage you know oh child porn child porn sexual abuse sexual assault child porn molesting a 13 year old fucking I mean take your fucking pick this is this is a mile long. Like, it's, it's ridiculous, the list of fucking kitty groomers and kid touchers and rapists. Like, like I said, if I included just rape, the GOP, in, in, for the GOP, 800 strong. Easy. My list grows to over 800 if I include rape. I can keep it probably under th- four or 300 if I just include um, kid fucking. Just kid fucking. Maybe three of like we're we're in the hundreds. We're well past hundred. Like we're in the hundreds for that. Like it is it is a hundred percent projection at this point. It's ridiculous. And like I said, when assembling the list, I've had one Democrat so far. One. He was banging um, pages. It was part of the uh, the the congressional page program scandal. There was one Democrat caught up in that. Um. So yeah. So yeah, the conservatives are declaring war now on um, queer suicide prevention hotlines because, you know, the suffering is the point. The cruelty is the point. They are horrible, horrible people, and they want to. Um, they want you. They, if you're gay, they want you. Uh, they want you dead. There's no way around that. They want you dead if if you are if if you're queer. Because the queers keep on multiplying. I know, right? Stop fucking breeding, straights. It's the heteros creating all the gays. Somebody pointed out, like, dude, I have been subjected to heterosexual propaganda my entire life. Teachers would come out and talk about their heterosexual relationships. They have fucking media would portray heterosexual relationships as the norm. My parents were in a normative cisgendered heterosexual relationship. Queer as the day is long. I was subjected to whole cloth social programming and propaganda that was for cisgendered heteronormative relationships. Still gay. So, like, I don't know how they, th- wait, apparently we're magic. I'm pretty mad, we're pretty fucking magic because apparently like one conversation and we can turn turn somebody gay. So, I mean, pretty bi for a dude that grew up in heteronormativity. Ah, fucking, you know. Let's be honest, some of the left is fine with the idea of banning the gays. Yeah, yeah, some of them are. Um, uh, I mean, you could, d- d- public, you could then debate whether they're actually belong on the left, but like that entire top left quadrant. Dude, they'd fucking, dude, they'd put us on the wall. The authoritarian left, 100% sees, uh, sees us as like some sort of neoliberal spawn. Um, the likes of Haz and Caleb Maupin and all those fucking morons. Uh, 100%, they'd put us on the wall. Yeah. How do you think I got my boyfriends at Kaiser? Um, so they want more dead kids. Yes. Yep. Pedophilia is not enough. Pedophilia is not enough now for them. Pedophilia and necrophilia combined is the new GOP model. Yeah, they they want dead de- dead gay kids, and they want to touch ki- touch kids too. Marcus said personally, I think homosexuality should be mandatory. Um. Yeah, and the neolibs would let it happen if they thought they could profit off it. (laughs) 
here since you guys are talking about it again. We already fucking covered it like ages ago. Here you go, Rye. Like this is we we talked about this ages ago. This this is the this is the piece. Yeah. Um Uh. Yeah, it's 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 in one fucking shit town in one shit state. I mean, it's fucking Kansas. Nobody gives a shit about fucking Kansas. Do people forget Kansas even exists? N you know. I'd say no offense, but I don't care because it's Kansas. It's like insulting the Amish. Who gives a shit? Right? It's fucking Kansas. Um, but yeah, it's it's one shit city in one in one shit state. So it's a flyover. Dude, nobody goes to Kansas intentionally. I mean that's fine, possible. I, I, most of it, you can do it after the fucking show. Um, Jesus Christ, who is this person? Uh, I, I, um, they're not still here. Um, Cupcake, Jesus. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't get. <laughs> you didn't get. You just are. Um. I mean, other than the fact that they actually are, like, working on making uh, roommates illegal. Bizarro-verse. Yeah. Yeah, there's, Kansas is, like, at, at the city level actively trying to... You don't go to Kansas, you wind up in Kansas. That's true. Nobody's in Kansas because people are like, let's go to Kansas. People are in Kansas because their ancestors got tired on the way to go uh, go to someplace that matters, like California, and said, ah, fine, let's stop here and fuck. They squeeze out a few kids, and the next thing you know, people live in Can Kansas. That's that's how you end up in Kansas. It's the same place you end up... Uh, same way you end up in Paducah, Kentucky. Nobody ends up in fucking Paducah, Kentucky because Paducah, Kentucky's the shit. They end up there because their ancestors are like, well, there's, here's far enough. And they just stopped. So it's your Manitoba. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Nonsense. I was shat here. Yeah. That's, that's, can that's Kansas. Dude, that's, that's a good chunk of this country. That's a good chunk of this country. The only reason people are there is because their ancestors are like, yeah, here's it's far enough. Uh, but it's Johnson County, um, specifically Shawnee City. Angriest people I've met were in, were in and from Kansas. It's time to duck. Uh, or Mitchell, Oregon, says Kaiser. I mean, they got so far. They got so close, Kaiser. That's so depressing that you, like, you make it all the way to Oregon and you're like, eh, here's far enough. Um, all right, so I did that. I did that. I did that. Oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. A dude on, um, a dude on Vexology. Is Caboose here? Caboose is not here. Wait. Yeah, Caboose. Oh, no, no. Caboose is here. Um, dude, Caboose, a dude from Vexology created a flag that got uh, that ended up being used in Chinese propaganda, like official state propaganda. Uh, it's the craziest shit. Um, yeah. Yeah. He, he 100% um, he created a flag. Hold on, I'll, I'll fall. I'll we'll do the we'll do the fucking. Okay, so he created a flag for Five Eyes. This is this is his creation. It's um, he 
he he did a he did a he did a flag. This happened a couple of days ago. He created a flag for the Five Eyes Alliance. We're not going to get into it. Most of you know what Five Eyes is by now. If you don't, Jesus Christ, just fucking search it. Um, it's America, Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand surveillance network. Um, so he created a flag for Five Eyes, fucking vexology, right? Um. So hang on, let me let me get you the. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is full on Chinese state propaganda used on network. And they put, they, they put his flag in the background like that, that draped over like this is, it's a hundred percent his flag. It's a hundred percent his flag. It's, it's official fucking state propaganda by the Chinese and it's included in it. Dude, like, it's absolutely insane. What are you talking about? That's it's about as close to a, a real world flag as you can get, Kaiser. That's that's pretty much a spot on real world flag. It adheres to most of the design standards. Yeah, like, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand the criticism. Oh, but hey. Well, Kaiser... It's because it's not in a fucking pretty, like, night dress or, like, uh, an evening gown. If I dressed the fucking flag up in a frilly, like, lace number, you'd probably like it. As far as flags go, it adheres to most functional standards. The aesthetics of a flag, I'm not going to get into because that's, that's a personal thing. Perception of beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I already know how you perceive beauty. So... There's not a there's there's probably not many flags on this planet you would find attractive. Um Interestingly enough, there's actually a correct number of stars. Um let me just check. Yes, there's a correct number of stars. Um because it rep uh, the stars are representing more than just the five eyes program. Um He's he's taken it to include the full uh, the full complement. Um, yeah, um, there's thirteen rung and then one in the middle, which would be us, um, which would be the fourteen eyes. So the stars are truly representative of the entirety of the program. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I just wanted to double check that, but yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we expanded the surveillance program, like globally. Like it, it technically includes. <clears throat> Okay. So you have US, UK, Canada, New Zealand, um, fucking, uh, wait, Australia, Australia, uh, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, UK, US. Um, and then you have the five, the plus France, Germany, Japan, Denmark. Um, okay, so Five Eyes Plus is France, Japan, South Korea, Denmark, Netherlands, Norway, Belgium, Germany, Italy, Spain, and Sweden. I think I got all of them in there. <sighs> Either way. Yeah, that's... But yeah, yeah, Caboose, the dude from Vexology got his fucking flag for the Five Five Eyes program ripped off by Chinese state media and fucking put in some weird image they drew up to like, I don't know, talk about herd immunity. Weird as shit. Dude, Caboose, I 100%. Everybody said, put that shit on your resume, man. Put that shit on your resume. Dude, you did, you did a piece of graphic design that ended up in a, like, international state propaganda program. Like, clearly it was of value to somebody. That, that shit meant something to somebody. So, like, yeah, put that shit on your resume, man. So many people were like, dude, seriously, resume that shit up. Um. All right. I, you know, I think I've got uh, I've got some movies pulled for Bad Movie Night already. I'm thinking a couple of different routes, but I've got I've got a bunch of I got a bunch of movies. Um They're not you know, genius level bad movies, but they are definitely bad movies <laughs> and should be enjoyable to watch. So, um, I think we may actually just do that. Oh God. What update now Twitch? Um, Oh Jesus. Okay. They've clarified the language on what is considered sexually explicit. <clears throat> Oh, Jesus, this is going to be. Oh. Okay, so the. All right. Okay, so nothing we do is technically sexually explicit. Um, DGen Storytime has never strayed into sexually explicit territory. That requires explicit, simulated, or implied oral, anal, and vaginal sex, including prolonged audio that implies sex, masturbation, orgasm, such as clear moaning and grunting. Explicit, simulated, or implied self or mutual masturbation, including groping or caressing, display of sexual bodily fluids, phone sex, chat sex, or otherwise engaging with other persons or chat to create sexual conduct or sexual content, uh, advertisement or solicitation of sexual services, escort services, sexual massages, and film sexual activity. Um, <clears throat> sexually suggestive content. Sex sexually suggestive content is prohibited. Um, content or camera focus on breast, buttocks, or pelvic region, including poses that deliberately deliberately highlight these elements, groping or explicit gestures directed towards breast, buttocks, or genitals, um, fetishizing behavior or activities such as focusing on body parts for sexual gratif gratif uh, gratif uh, gra 
gratification, or erotic role play. Featuring sex toys in contexts unrelated to sexual education, erotic dances such as stripping or flashing, pole dances or acrobatics with sexually suggestive fl- framing, posting, displaying, or sharing erotica, including detailed dis- descriptions of sex acts or pornography. That we could run afoul of if we're not careful sometimes. Uh, contextual exceptions. Oh, but hilariously, um, there's ex- there's exemptions for video games. I, you know what? I I'm just gonna keep doing me and just ignore Twitch, and we'll go from there. Not even gonna, not even gonna try and figure it out. Um, tormented souls started with full frontal nudity. Hmm. It's Marcus, that's everything humans do. Can we show sex toys for educational purposes? Actually, you can based on that, that reading. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm not even going to raid you guys out. I'm just going to dump into, I have some cooking to do. So we're going to get off the air early. Um, I need to, I need to get some food started. Um, but yeah, like I said, we've got, I've got a few, I've got a couple few movies picked out. Um, we can, we can go over what we want to do. Um, but there we go. Um, I will be in VC shortly after impossible. Are you on the discord server? If you're not on the Discord server, you need to be on the Discord server because if you wanted to talk to me, I don't know if you wanted to talk to me on air, off air, whatever, but I'll be in VC here in a second. Um, you are. Cool. Then you're going to want to be in VC in a se- in a little bit. Um, um, so, yeah. Like, you know, tell me what's up and we can go from there. Um Everybody else, I'm just going to release you into the wild. I'm not going to do the Twitch thing. I'm not going to read you out. I'm going to make you make your own decisions like the adults, the autonomous adults that you are. Um, And yeah, we're going to do Bad Movie Night if you do Bad Movie Night with us. Either way, another week down. um, And yeah, I don't, I, you know, keep your heads on a fucking swivel because shit's getting weird out there. Especially if you're queer. If you're queer, they're coming for you. Like, they really are coming for you. Um, so, y'all take care of yourselves. My liberty! Don't make me make you think. Uh, freedom! That's a lot of freedom! Um, all right. Here we go. Everybody. Night. Good night. I'll see you in VC.